Yo, we are going to dive into a lot of projects today. Oh boy. All right. So I had a big meal and prep for this. Hopefully we have 10 projects to go over for the hackathon that we hosted in August. Um, it's going to be a long stream. Or I'll get tired and split it up and do the second half another day. We'll see. But what's up? All right, let me go ahead and change a couple things. I'm going to change the title. Uh, Don the developer. Reviewing Don the Developer Hackathon projects. Uh... All right. So I think that's good. Let me pull up live chat. Pop out chat. We're gonna have to log into a couple different things along the way, but we'll deal with that as we go. All right, let me go ahead and advertise that in Discord. So we're going to do live. I'm um, live on YouTube. Bring this over. Um, the hackathon just finished. And today, we're going to be reviewing, um, hopefully, all of the projects on stream. Hopefully all of the projects on stream. Okay. And then we'll include the link. Publish. All right. And then and go ahead and make a sticky or a pinned comment. So, um, I will not be answering web dev slash career questions today. The focus is um, on reviewing projects from the hackathon we hosted in our Discord server. And, um, all right. The Spotify, go away. Okay, I gotta move to live chat. All right. Ooh, let's log into Google Drive and start reviewing them. So, um, do, 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 do. Google Drive, parents, go to Drive. Okay. Almost there, session is expired. Of course it is. Let's go ahead and log in. I'll put timestamps and everything as well. Um, so if any of the hackathon participants are here, I'll actually just um, mention the projects I'm going to be reviewing for sure, but then I'm going to try to get to all of them. So uh, K-pop wins, Music Valley, City Builds, JS4 All, and On the Ball Stats are the first five. 
So we'll definitely get through those, and then we'll try to get through the rest. All right. Pete's. No, no. Individual. Okay. So, I think everything's loaded properly. Um, so, we're going to start with K-pop wins. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a look at the GitHub, make sure no commits were made to it since the hackathon ended two days ago. You are good. All right. Um, well, you actually... Here, let's start with this. I'll actually put it up so I can identify when the, um, to put the, the timestamp. All right, K-pop wins. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna do a couple things. So the goal of this hackathon was to build a practical application that would gain real users, that served a real purpose, that solved a real problem. So one of the problems with junior developer portfolios is their projects are, um, they're not very meaningful, they're not very impactful. And I find that companies really have a huge preference for user-centered developers. Um, and they love where they can find projects that are relatable to the problems you're gonna be solving at that company, right? And so when you're building specific projects, you should truly consider, um, you should truly consider applying for companies that are solving similar problems that you like solving. And I think that's a really powerful way to stand out. So what's up, Bubble Goose? Let's go, congrats everyone who made it to the end. That's right. So we actually, um, just to be, who, just to count this up, I participated in the hackathon. I failed my own hackathon, by the way. Uh, yeah, it looks like we had 28 people that originally signed up. Or, sorry, 27 people. And only 10 made it to the end. So, congrats to everyone that did finish. Um, I'm very strict with it. I don't make exceptions. Except for the first week. And, uh, we even had people fail, like, the last week. But they didn't keep up with the updates, so... Um, it was, like, it was required that you actually had something for me to test at the end, and... I know people were rushing and, you know, it was pretty hectic, but everyone got something in. So I got to give you guys props. Um, but that's, I kind of want to give a little bit of the feel of the hackathon, but also the responsibilities of just being a professional developer with deadlines too. And keeping people up to date with what you're working on. It's, it's important. And a lot of people, they kind of just want to dive into their code and they don't really want to build up that um, transparency at all. And I think that transparency of sharing your updates, it helps. It helps build connections. It helps give uh, employers transparency into you growing as a developer. Like, you know, just even a specific, like I, I've shared this story before, you know, I got my first position. A big part of it was like, I would link my Twitch stream, my live coding stream in my cover letter and my uh, boss actually viewed my live stream and I skipped a technical interview because of it. And I think transparency as a new developer, as an aspiring developer, is very powerful if you combine it with actually building connections, so. Oh, I think we're ready. What's up, Miles? All right, let's do it. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to read the original purpose of the application. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna finish this. <laughs> I'm gonna try to go as long as I need to tonight. Um, am I? Timer's rolling. All right, so the first one is from Bad Magic on Discord. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. So we're going to look in projects. Discord is being buggy. That's cool. Let's try it again. Projects. Okay. So project name, Music Show Wins Tracker. Um... There are several music shows in K-pop that are air every week. At the end of each, there's a winner declared. Right now, it's very hard to just look up how well a certain song did and who they were up against when they won. This app aims to solve that by gathering all that information in one place and providing an easy-to-use interface for searching and filtering the winners and their competition. So this was the original submission before uh, Bad Magic started working on this project. 
ideal user, someone who's interested in seeing how well certain songs or groups did on music shows. Core features, all the wins data gathered in one place that is easy to search and filter. Okay, so his project submission. Uh, let's take a look. This app aims to provide an easy to use interface. Okay, same thing. The main page lets users view the top artists or songs sorted by wins. This list can also be filtered by year. The details page lets users view some artistic specific details through a couple of bar charts. The first chart shows which songs got how many wins and what year it's from. Uh, second chart shows their yearly wins. Um, this page can be expanded in the future and includes some more interesting details about the artist. Okay, cool. So, all right, let's dive into it. I think the original post was to be able to show like people, users didn't have an idea of like when the artists went up against each other and that's going to be valuable. Like I'm not a K-pop person, so my knowledge is limited, but that's what you said in Discord. Um, let's see if that's the case. Um, uh, who they were up against when they won. Okay. So let's take so the main page is top wins so you have your artist you have your song this number of wins in 2014 filters do they work yep uh what why do you get that flash there okay artists 22 wins based on year okay so you basically have a top tally and you have a filter uh do you have pagination doesn't look like it Pagination could be a really interesting feature uh, to talk about in an interview. But if you don't have pagination, you don't... Oh, that looks buggy. <laughs> rank? Wait. Oh, no, no, no. It's actually... Well, so the rank probably shouldn't be duplicate, right? If you have two with six, is this really how K-pop ranks the songs? Probably not. You probably have to figure out a way to rank this more accurately i've never seen a ranking system that had multiple rank three multiple rank two you can have like a score that's duplicate but this feels like if an employer saw this it would just seem like kind of a low effort way to rank these um you didn't finish this feature that's what it would look like um on this page you can view the top artists and songs or the music uh show win you can use the artist and song buttons to toggle between the two lists. Use the year drop down to filter the list by year. Okay. Um, win details. Let me get an artist BTS. Okay. So it does look like so you have the you have an actual found search result that's the same. It actually has a less emphasis than this text which makes me immediately think oh no results but then i gotta like if i read further i do see bts i shouldn't have to mouse over to see that i actually got a search result so i'd focus on that ux a little bit emphasize this more but the increased size alone right if you have an increased size here and then a decreased size here and they're the same color this is gonna have more emphasis and when I, my eyes immediately go to no artist selected oh okay no search results right Stop making my brain think to be able to realize that there is a search result. Why were there two loading wheels? There only needs to be one. Um, so what you can do, I don't know if this was built like with a front end framework or what, but you basically have loading wheels on specific components within the page. You may consider having a loading component with the page component or whatever contains both of these. Uh, two loading components, it just looks amateurish. Um, I'm going to be very critical of these, by the way, because I want it to be effective as a portfolio project. Um, I can't even read this. Holy shit. Um, this is a PNG that I have to open up in a new tab just to read. Um, so can you like I would actually explore a chart library. That'd be really effective. So I do want to give you the benefit of the doubt. This is a hackathon, right? A lot of people were very ambitious with their projects and they expected to get more done. And so me being critical isn't me saying this is a bad project. I want to be very clear about that. Um, but it's me being critical to make this a really effective project for your portfolio and for users to actually push this out. Because I'm assuming like you 
you understand the K-pop industry well, um, and you think this would be useful to other people. So I would actually explore like a chart library or something like that, or charts, even, I, hell, I mean, if you're aiming for front end positions and you use like a minimalist library and you kind of build your own chart or something like that, that can be very impressive. But just even showing, like focusing on data analytics, like this is, could be strong for positions that like might work on dashboards or might do like beautiful uh, data analytics and display that on their websites. That could be relatable. Um, but yeah, this isn't even really readable. Think your criticalness will help everyone get better as devs. Every participant should be 100% proud of getting to the end of the event. 100%, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be helpful. Uh, but yeah, you should be. You honestly should be. What happens if... Okay, so I have multiple... Uh, let's go a pink. Is there like a... What if I do like IV, EX... GI, no, I'm looking for IT, no, IV and IT, X1, EX, EXO, and I'm looking for similar titles. So if I search monster, is that going to work? good it shouldn't right that's a song title but if i search be hold on be okay bi big bang any other songs with bi dang it um it it damn it hmm trying to trick this Beast, IU, no. M A M O E X O. Okay, so this actually, you could have this. Um, how many? I don't even know how many entries this is, but you could even. What if you did pagination, right? What if you loaded the first 25 results and as they scrolled down, it loaded more results? That's an impressive feature to showcase employers rather than preloading all the data. Um, anyways, all right, I'm not going to try to, uh, trick the filter, but I'm assuming you've, uh, you'll probably spend a little bit more time with the search and functionality. I think you said that. Um, anything else about, have you ever wondered which, uh, song by K-pop group got the most music show wins? Maybe you're looking to see which K-pop song achieved the most wins. What the heck? The sources for this data are listed below. Um... Okay. That's fine. What I would do... Okay, so the original page is... Top wins. And that's fine. You talked about a feature of, like, if an artist won, who they went up against... I would say that is uh, probably a relevant feature, right? You identified it as such in your original submission. So I wonder what would happen if, like, you did load, like, win details. Hold on. Maybe I'm just way off. Um, and you actually do have that as a feature. No, you just have the charts. That's right. So you don't actually have, like, a head-to-head, -head, right? I wonder... I don't know how, like, K-pop... And so this is where, if you're in a certain industry, it's going to help to look at different websites within this industry to get a feel for the UX and how it should look and just like the common conventions around the design. I think that's really helpful. But um, I can't really say how useful this is to K-pop people. But in terms of like the impressiveness to an employer, I would say it has very basic functionality. I mean, you have a sort, but you're preloading everything. I think pagination would be very helpful. You have different tabs. Um, what you might consider is using like a, a query variable above um, because how do I, what happens if I want to like bookmark this, right? There's no way for me to do that when I click refresh, state is uh, basically reverted.
and it's set back to default. What if I want to bookmark this, right? And so when you have tabular data, hold on, I'm going to make sure you actually put this in a table. This is not in a table. This is tabular data. Why is this not in a table? This is perfect for a table. Um, but I don't, like you don't have to put it in a table, but I this feels like this feels like a table. I'm kind of curious why you chose to just put it in a bunch of divs. Um, what else? What was the theme for the hackathon? Essentially building a practical application. Building a useful one that can gain users that actually uh, solves a real problem. So, yeah. In terms of, like, what... I, I'd be curious about, like, what some, are some of the features that you're going to be working with to push this forward. But a big thing is, and this is a huge common mistake people make, like, users typically... Well, I wouldn't say typically, but there are going to be some users that want to bookmark this. So having um, query data that's loaded, like if I bookmark, uh, question mark, uh, filter equals whatever, um, or artist equals whatever, like that filter should be applied as soon as I load the page, but you have a default state that's loaded where I can't even bookmark that. Um, it sounds like, yeah, so I would, I would build that functionality into it. And then I would work on your like head to head. You had mentioned this feature of, like, uh, two artists, uh, I guess they're scored based on competing with another artist. I don't know if it's, like, by song or by artist. But breaking that down, like you mentioned in the features, it sounds like it's important. So maybe that is one of the next features that you're working on as well. Let's go ahead and check out mobile. Uh, cool. iPhone XR. Uh, nice. That's fine. This is going to be a little bit hard to click on mobile, I would expect. You might want to increase the size of this. Wind de just the height of it. Wind details. What happens if I do a refresh? You at least do load the details page, okay. And then what you're going to notice is this chart is even... So I, I can't read this. This is pointless. This is useless, right? Um, so making the charts more readable is going to be big and it looks like your references are going off the page. Let me just make sure, uh, do, 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 refresh, Chrome dev tools can be a little bit buggy. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's not, maybe I'm like way off with that. If you preload the page, let's go empty cache and hard reload. And then I'll usually toggle this. Um, and some loading issues there. We'll see. Never let them know your next move. What? <laughs> to make an MVP, exactly. Yep. Um, okay. I... Is this actually a bug? Um, I would go through different mobile views and see how it's actually loaded in mobile. If... So because, like, resizing this, this might just be a flat-out bug. You might have, like, a minimum width. Uh, well, no, that's not a minimum width. I don't know what's going on here. That might be a bug. Um, anything else? Top wins. Man, pagination or pagination would look really good for your uh, portfolio project. A lot of people skip on pagination. That's a really it's, it's kind of an impressive feature for um, new developers. It's it's a little bit of a trickier feature too. Um, okay, there's no images. I'm gonna trust that there are no like really big assets that you're not minimizing because I think converting this to a little bit more of a chart that um, is readable rather than just some random PNG you're shrinking down is going to be useful. But yeah, that's my limitation of like knowing how useful this website is. I'm assuming it can be useful, but I truly think about 
what is going to make this stand out? What is actually going to make uh, people want to use this? So keep in mind, like if you're a big K-pop fan, you may consider building content around this, right? Build content. Like if you are surprised that a certain artist beat another artist and you have an opinion about that, what happens if you build a blog in this website? What happens if you start talking about these wins, right? It seems like people care about this. They probably have opinions about, you know, oh, you know, BTS, Dynamite. There's no way they got number one. That is BS, right? Maybe they have that opinion. Maybe you have that opinion. So creating content around that search engine friendly content can help bring traffic to this website, uh, which would be fantastic. Um, I think that's pretty much it. But uh, yeah, seriously, Bad Magic, awesome job with this. Um, I think it's a really bare bones, basic version of this, but it looks nice. The design is pretty. And I think uh, just focusing on some like UX in readability with this, and it seems like maybe you had some responsive issues, I don't know what's going on with that, um, can go a long way. But it, I mean, this is like the start of a project that can turn into something, but I'm trusting you to know what that something should be based on K-pop fans. So yeah, good job with that. Good job completing it. Like you guys said, I mean, just completing this hackathon, we had 28 people sign up or 27, 28 or 27, and only 10 survived. Uh, let's see. That sounds so grim. It's not like that. Um, all right. Okay, so this one, I think I'm going to have to create... I have a Spotify account. I'm going to have to link it. Okay. Oh, no, this is not the one. Never mind. Never mind. Um, uh, Romero. All right, so let me just check GitHub, make sure there are no extra commits. There are two days ago. Okay, you are good. We will review it. Um, all right, so no login information. So basically, the original project design was, let me go ahead and look up his name. Um, okay. So Music Valley is a website platform centered around teaching and tutoring music theory to users through video-based courses connected with hyperlinks to a video sharing platform called YouTube. Its core features are the video-based courses offered to the user in a simplified expl explanatory state where they could potentially learn to play any of the four instruments provided by the video-based courses while also intending to display a friendly environment to newcomers wanting to dive uh, in deeper to music theory and fundamental basics, as well as providing background history about the website and a narrative description about the founder. Well, the founder. Okay. Founder of what? Uh, well, also having a hyperlinks connecting the user to the founder's personal social media, as well as a contact section where you could reach out via email to the founder of Music uh, Valley. Okay. So... What you completed was it allows users to navigate a website about music, how to learn it with instruments, um, also learn info about the website through video-based courses linked to YouTube channel. Main feature, provide users an easier way to navigate and discover their music desires by being offered a well-structured environment. The website provides hyperlinks to Music Valley's main YouTube channel, and it will prevent the users from having difficulty in learning by delivering a roadmap to successfully learn the music. That's impressive. All right. So, uh, welcome to Music Valley. Free, uh, full free music courses for beginners. What I would do is create a call to action here. Um, even if it's just like scroll down or something like that. But I think like filling up the entire page and nothing here, I think you are wasting space for no reason. I have a call to action. Like, okay, I landed on this page, free music courses for beginners. Okay, like what is the very next action that I can take to get to that? Even if it jumps it down here, that's a fantastic call to action button. Uh, courses, learn the basic fundamentals of music theory through any of the given courses we offer. Keys, is this? Hey, this should be text. None of this should be images. Have these, uh, uh, I would even al not align these, but have these all be the same height. Uh, it looks a little bit weird where this is a little bit of a shorter height. All right, I won't Elias. And this is Elias's uh, project. But yeah, text, make this searchable. Like, one thing when you're trying to get a developer job, uh, search engine optimization is huge, especially for front-end developers. You should care about that. 
and like really fundamental stuff like searchable text rather than never expect a search engine to interpret graphics or text within graphics like that's why you provide alt text but i would i would make this text have these images have this text um about learn more about music valley foundation why this main focus is to captivate um if it's going to be big paragraph text like this left align it it's a little bit more readable that the, like you could center align the headers but left align the paragraph text contact um about okay fill out the form uh do you have what do you have um a message okay so you have at least html5 validation uh i'm gonna trust you a backend validation for that or you're gonna build it into it so courses uh keys learn basic fundamentals of piano keyboard free piano keyboard courses at music valley free piano at music valley why uh, so i'm guessing like you just didn't finish this section you just have a bunch of duplicates um, I'm not going to load any YouTube videos, but so it's good that you're opening it in a new tab. You might even include the thumbnail of the YouTube video. Why not? Right? Because I, you're creating a YouTube channel and you're, you were talking about like how you want to create content, build up a channel. And I don't think you really got very far with that because you were working heavy on the website. But what happens when you have like, here, I'll, I'll look at, I'll load this up, right? So I have a podcast episode. I just have a thumbnail, some basic text that corresponds to the YouTube video. Um, so I don't know if you just didn't get to it, but that's what I would do and just create pictures. Cause like this looks good. Uh, people love pictures, people love graphics. That's what I would do. I uh, just have graphics here that actually link to it. What you weren't able to get to it, got it. Makes sense. Um, you could see the vertical line is a little bit off, at least center that, but I, it sounds like you're gonna rework this entire card anyways um so i would even like honestly make it very clear that this is sequential so when we go to home learn basic fundamentals of piano keyboard and the more courses that you're gonna have or not courses uh, um the more modules or something like that, people kind of have this expectation of a course being sequential and it can become overwhelming or feel overwhelming when they don't know what to click first. Granted, they're probably gonna assume the first element is first, but don't even cause them that stress. Don't cause them that anxiety. And I, like, it might sound silly that I'm saying this stuff, but like really um, do not, like just expect the user to click off this website as soon as possible when there's any sort of like, ambiguity that they got to figure out anything like that maybe something that lets the user it's an external link oh i think he meant to say lets the user know um and yes uh yeah go to youtube video or something like that that would pro yeah actually i agree yeah if you're not going to create some sort of summary page i agree like just having cards and having that link that goes to let the text even not just an arrow that lets them know like um, external source or YouTube video or go to YouTube video. I don't know. There's probably a better text selection that you can use for that, but I actually think that's, uh, it can be jarring to open up a new tab if they don't expect it. I think that's good advice. My plan was to have a drop down, uh, section when clicked and the thumbnail of the video with its description would show up a drop down. Okay. I don't know what that would look like, but okay. So you're going to continue working on this, but uh, but yeah, I would, or like, I would have numbers. If it is sequential, make that very clear with like a, uh, not a ranking, but an order with one, two, three, or something like that. Like module, like just a basic layout of an actual course. Um, even just having that structure and just looking at other structures of different courses that you have went through. I think that can be very helpful. All right. About foundation experience methods. Uh, yeah, pretty quick animation biography. Okay, I'm assuming this is an external link. Um, contact, fill out a form, credits, flat icon. Um, you don't have to provide that, right? I mean, you can if you want. Um, so here's what I would do. People have this mis... 
for some reason, and I did this when I was 18 and I built my web hosting company. I used the word us all the time. We're now in an era where people don't trust corporations. They don't trust organizations. They don't trust companies, right? And the more you can personalize it, if you are a one man shop, the more you can personalize your website, like they're, they're hearing this directly from you, that goes a long way in building a connection with the user. So as a simple thing like follow me instead of follow us can go a long way. Now, if you have multiple people, fine. But if it's just you, I would say follow me and use wording like that. A um, little bit more spacing. You could even put like underlined links for here if you want, but it's not a big deal. What sounds better specifically, Elias? Um, okay, let's check out mobile. But yeah, I mean, this is actually like a really valuable tool. People want to learn music. Um, I don't... Why did you choose to highlight the C and the EY, though? Follow me. Gotcha. Okay. Was... Is there... There has to be a purpose if you're doing it. Don't just do it to do it. What is the purpose of highlighting this C and this E and Y? Because you're actually taking away from the emphasis of free, which I think is a big thing to highlight, um, by choosing to highlight these two words, which are also... All of this is bold. Are these three letters. So what is the purpose of highlighting those three letters? M and the V? I wouldn't even do that. I don't think I wouldn't even do that. I would just highlight free. This is huge. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll let you type that out, Elias. Uh let's go ahead and check out mobile. Do -do -do. XR. All right. So we have the navigation. This text is small because this is small. Okay. Um, what is the size of that text? 15. I would go at least 16 on mobile. 15 is low. You could see that the contrast is a little poor here. I'd figure out what you want to do with the back image to emphasize that. Um, is Elias still here? Maybe he had to dip. Uh, courses. Again, text, 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 text. And you have text. Good. It's just these that are an issue because they're full graphics. Um, still readable. Grand crowd. Elias, can you tell me... Um, okay, maybe you didn't hear my question. Uh, when we go to home, you highlighted the C and you highlighted the E and the Y. Why did you choose to highlight those two? Let's go to keys. Okay. Um, do you only have the footer on the homepage? Oh, you don't, have, you don't have the footer at all on mobile. Why? I wouldn't, like, for different... Include that footer. Is this a... Uh, hold on, let me go 50%. That's that's what it is. Probably just a Chrome DevTools thing, maybe. But you can see how the links are really shrunken. This is rough. I was just tr uh, trying styling. I'll remove it. Okay, good. Emphasize to free. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Home. So the links, the font size of this is... This feels... It's 16 pixels. Um, I didn't even highlight it. Ah. Wait, what am I missing here? Well. Okay, let me look at what's imported. I'm, I'm not highlighting anything. What is going on? Nothing weird with the HTML. Can I not? I have the elements selected. I, I guess I just expected it to still be highlighted here. Footer. 
What am I missing? Footer was the last section I worked on before the hackathon ended. I forgot to add it there. Add what there specifically? But anyways, I would go with a little bit more of like, instead of creming everything horizontally like that. So you, you mentioned footer is the last thing. They're going to continue working on it. I would give this a little bit more room to breathe. Um, even just like, ugh. okay. Yeah, these links, people are going to fat finger those links for sure. Yeah, and you notice the um, spacing is a little bit off. You have huge spacing here, which I think is unnecessary. Um, anyways, yeah. Anything else that I should be concerned with? Any image optimization issues? Oops, uh, image. These are pretty small images. I'm not worried about these. Um, wow, never mind. That's huge. No. Ooh, that, there's, I don't even think it grows that large on desktop, does it? But keep the image as small as it needs to be, and then run it through tiny PNG, or tiny JPEG, since it's a JPG. That's what I would do. Um, image optimization and prioritizing that, it's going to be important. Again, anything that's going to be very accessible, fast loading, user-friendly, search engine optimization, all big things for aspiring front-end developers. Plus, first footer i've ever made nice nice um so again like again i'm gonna be critical to the point where i want it to be an effective portfolio project and i know a lot of people that are working on their projects right you might not be quite there and where i'm judging it but it can be there you know what i mean it can be there and this is something that you can aim for um and so just continue working on these projects but yeah i see this as being very useful It'd actually be really cool to see this page develop and it like really turn out with what you were expecting. But um, cool. Awesome job with that, Alliance. All right, on to our next project. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that uh, updated two days ago. Good, good. All right. Andrew. All right. Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Spell check. Andrew, come on. Spell check, man. Uh, home, import, build, builds, contact. Here's my opinion. If you have to provide a bold for all of your text and all of your headers um, and have this like bubbly thing, unless it's conventionally accepted within the game for the website that you're building, and like you, there are just tons of websites like this, um, it, pr it looks amateurish. It looks amateurish. I can't talk. It looks amateurish, but I would experiment with different font weights. And if the font weight doesn't really show up, like it's kind of hard to see on this background. Maybe it means you're using the bat, uh, wrong background or the wrong shade on the background. Maybe you got to darken the background. So, or maybe you just create like its own div or container here with a different color. And then this is your hero image and you have your search term, but city of builds database i would say like instead of search term say like search build or search class if you have classes in this game that's what i would do sounds good elias yeah tiny png and tiny uh, uh jpg is huge i use it all the time welcome to city builds database here you can this kind of just looks like a mobile build um you can upload your build. So or it looks like a mobile layout, right? You just have everything centered. It looks very amateurish. Um, you might even create like different containers, different cards. Um, maybe it's spreading out way too wide. Um, it looks like you do have a max. Whoop. Hold on. Do you have... 
probably have like a max class px lg isn't this um probably a css library container but yeah i would focus on um creating like cards or something this kind of just looks like a a giant mobile layout it's a layout for mobile and you it looks like you didn't finish the desktop version Um, search, test. You don't need to highlight it with this big border. Like, if you want to change the... Um, what happens if you... I actually like it. Maybe this is just preference. I like it starting off as black. Because orange... Man, this background is rough to try to create great contrast around this background. It's very rough. What if you start off with this black? Um, and then when you do highlight over it, it turns orange. Um, orange is a little bit closer to red, a little bit closer to a color of action, which that, um, then you can get rid of that border to, like, indicate, which is supposed to indicate that there is an action to be taken. But, yeah, I would maybe start out with black. Um, increase the search term, uh, width, the form. Okay, so you do search... So searching, this is like, uh, you get all the builds, and if I do test, you get page zero, zero. So here's some things to keep in mind when you are doing pagination, which is cool. You have pagination, but don't include elements that are irrelevant when you don't need them. You don't need these arrows. They're disabled, but th these shouldn't even pop up. And page zero, zero is... Kind of irrelevant anyways like just have some basic text of like no builds found or something like that um import build using uh i think you did provide a username oh you have a demo import build uh oh yeah demo login there we go Okay, um, select a mids MDB file. Okay, I'm not going to go through that. Manage tags, uh, select status of the character build. So, it looks like this is unfinished, and you just had unique keys to represent whatever this means. Public ready, right? Like, that's not very user-friendly text. And if I do click import, um, you just load the page again. No errors, so no error handling. Um, I don't like are tags relevant to people who are going to use this website? Actually, I'm sorry. Let me um, go over what you did put. Main features are a searchable database of character builds for the game City of Heroes. My app is a central location where players of City of Heroes MMO can view and share builds for other characters. Um, and I do actually want to just take a look at what you originally submitted. Ability to upload two builds from JSON format. Ability to save build to a database. Ability to share build with other uh, users. Stretch searchable database with power filters. Download build to be able to edit it in the desktop application. That's impressive. So there are going to be some features that I cannot test. And that's fine. Um, this is going to be very, very specific. So I can tell you from like an employer standpoint, this looks like the layout looks very amateurish. A lot of bubbly, bold text. Nothing's really aligned. It's just like a big page of centered text. And this just looks weird when you have it like carrying over one word to the next line, right? It means you really didn't spend a lot of time with the layout. Um, you kind of just like used a, a mobile... Essentially, you can get away with centered text like this if it's short enough on a mobile layout. And it just seems like the desktop is unfinished. Um, hello, demo user. So with your links, create actionable um to focus on your text like hello demo user Wh when i click this it should be manage profile right manage profile or if you want to show me that i'm logged in manage demo user uh the username email um 
two-factor personal data. I'm not going to go through that. But to, if you set up two-factor authentication, that can be uh, potentially impressive. Personal data. It's a demo account, so I don't assume this is going to... Deleting this data will permanently remove your account, and this cannot be recovered. Download. You provide options to download. Delete. Awesome. Builds. Um, see if your builds. We're going to go into these. Those giant mobile layouts are pretty common out there. You'd think it's better to read that than a tiny desktop layout, but I would argue that not. They're very amateurish. They're co like they're common among new developers, but professional companies are. Ex it's going to be extremely rare for a professional company that provides a good user experience to deliver something like that. But yeah, they're they're common enough because people um, need to spend a lot more time with it. Page one of one probably should be at the top, right? Typically, you're going to have a convention of page one of one up here. And then, again, like, do you really need page one of one? Not really. Like, why do you have pagination one here if you don't have other pages? Just get rid of these two. Like, so just look at state. If you have multiple pages, just get rid of those two. Uh, or if you have multiple pages, then you can showcase these uh, the pagination. Um... Check out the build, build details. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna check out builds. Yeah, there, there seems to be a lot of features. That is true. Uh, it's a tarp, class defender. Um, looks like some misalignment here. Debuff monster, almost as good as TAI125. Tags, devices, devices. You're gonna have an employer. So here's the thing. You're going to have an employer that looks, and I mentioned this with gaming websites in general at the beginning of the hackathon. You're going to have an employer that looks at this where if they don't really build gamified things or they can't relate to the game, this is going to be close to meaningless to them, right? Navigating through a portfolio project like this isn't, they're not going to spend the time to do this. So when you're building like a lot of games, if you're not applying to companies where it revolves around building a website around the game or gamified features or like you don't have gamers on the team it's going to be hard for them to find this relatable and they're just going to go to this web page see like a really broken structure a uh, really broken layout bad ux um and just kind of assume like you are just starting out with development so keep that in mind that is important to keep in mind so i would even think about like okay how can someone that's like literally knows nothing about city build but they're just getting into this how can this deliver the information in a very readable and UX friendly way so even brand new players can understand what the hell is going on here? And so that's what you have to consider with your tools if you're using them for portfolio projects. Download profile data is a super cool feature. I, yeah, I like downloading backup data. Usually is for uh, builds. Um, I think the download profile data should be sent through email. Why? City builds, I think the game is called. What's up? By the way, what's up, everyone? That's just hopping in here. Just going through. We got a lot of projects to go through, so I'm kind of trying to fly through. Um, do 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 traps. Why do you? Okay, so you have these weird borders and text pressed right up against that border. I'm just like guessing you haven't really had time to work on a lot of the CSS. And so again, this is a hackathon, you know, it, it's very much, it's going to look unfinished. The functionality is important with this. Um, enhancement levels on, off. I would actually, on, uh, how do I know the status of on, off? I shouldn't have to scroll down to figure that out. out. You could even put like toggle enhancement levels. Um, and you could put like even just a little tiny div. Maybe even an after element if you really want to. That says like on and you press it, then it switches to off. Um, I think toggles can be a little bit confusing when you just have text here and you have to scroll down or see something else on the rest of the page. What happens if I'm like, the hell does this do? Um, nothing. And then I get to scroll down, then I can experiment. I shouldn't have to scroll down, then scroll back up to figure out what the hell is going on. Uh, secondary. Primary. All, why do you even have these? It literally just goes to the middle of the page. Um, what I would do...
So you have a, several vertical columns. Inherent, uh, inherent powers, inherent. I wonder if you could have cards. So you have primary columns, but you have an entire like horizontal roll of a uh, row of primary powers and you click primary and it goes to that horizontal row. And then below that you have secondary powers below that you have Epic because it almost seems pointless to have these, right? It just keeps going to the middle of the page because they're all vertical. And then, um, I wonder if I would have like, like the primary powers would be the row. And then within that you could have these, um, What's the word? Um, like, get bumped to the next line if you have, like, three builds, and then the fourth build will get bumped to the next line. Uh, let's go ahead and look at a trap of Hunter. Pacing. I like these little pop-ups. Pretty common with different build websites. Um, can't click into it. Maybe those buttons useful on mobile. We'll check out mobile. Yeah, but that they probably are. But that should be like if you're going to have these, these should be useful on desktop as well. If you're you're actually going to have them on desktop. Um, but then it like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, I like so I wonder if you're importing some of these icons. Right, you can use a different library. I remember building a WoW site, and um, I was importing gear, gear pop-ups, because I, I forgot what I built. It was a long time ago. Oh yeah, I built like for gold farmers, people who would just like grind gold. I'd love going in dungeons, and I like playing the auction house. And so I was starting to build a website where you would be able to see the different gear and how much gold you can make off that gear and the amount of time it would take to grind that dungeon out. Um, and I would, I just imported a library that would actually allow me to do like really easy pop-ups like this, but um, yeah, seems like it's going to be relevant to city builds, of course. Um, seems like a lot of functionality. Let's check out mobile. Uh, do, 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 do. comment, debuff, monster, debuff, m moster. Is that a thing? Do you mean monster? Or. So it's scrolling a little bit too far, as you can see. I see that you have a sticky uh, filter, which I think can be helpful. Epic, inherent. Yeah, I think the placement of where you go is a bit off. Maybe it's not. I think it's meant to actually go a little above, like right here, right? Or here. Um, hurdle. H2, one hurdle. Okay. Oops, let me go to a couple other pages on mobile. Um, let me actually look up image, performance, uh, City of Heroes, okay. Probably gonna be a pretty big load. Looks like a lot of these might be optimized. If they're not optimized, run them through TinyPNG, but if you already did, good job. They seem like low enough image. I mean, 16 kilobytes for that might actually be a lot. Um, just run it through Tiny PNG if you haven't already. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it. I think like being able to spend more time on like if you are aiming for front end positions or full stack positions, spending more time on like you know really contrast, um, just UX in general. Uh, focus on like content placement and like really building out. Like I love the idea of starting out with a. A search term but like this contrast is poor so you might split this off into its own header have a hero image and the search is the main feature um and then welcome find builds explore builds um that's fine get started register 
So think about like what would actually, you have a lot of different call to actions here. And so what I would start thinking about is what is the first thing that people are going to want to do? Like what is the main action? And creating like all of your call to actions on the homepage makes me feel like you don't know the primary action people are trying to take. Um, and that's what a common thing a lot of people do is they'll just put every single thing that you could do on the homepage. But like, you know, like a lot of build websites will have like top builds, right? They'll have top builds that have high performance right below. I wonder if like not even just like a highlight. I, but I, I wonder what would happen if you put this underneath here. Why don't you put it underneath here? Why do I have all this information to read through? And then you could have action links, text that describes the action that you want to take. Like, so like your builds is here and maybe home could be builds, right? And then you have import build. And then you have, um, add tags. I, I'm not going to dig into that, but like you have register or like reg you probably don't want to have this on the homepage of register because share explore and elevate your gameplay is meaningless like what the hell does that mean that doesn't tell me why i should register like that what what does that even mean i'm not going to register no that's a pointless action right so you haven't really figured out when users need to actually register so i would actually include the action text of what people need to do so like import builds, right? So if you if you wanted to import a build, maybe that's when they need to register. And if they're not registered, what if I do like log out? So we're gonna go home, import build. Um, and then can I import a build without logging in? What do I actually, oh, I'm still, I can't log out, log out doesn't work. Okay, I don't know. Oh wait. Okay, so if I click log out, don't make me click here to log out. Just log me out. Just log me out right away. Um, import build. Okay, so this is where you would require the registration. And having this register here is just pointless. They're not ready. They don't even know why they should register. This is where you would include this registration. Don't make them have to do extra actions to be able to use your website um, and don't deliver that information that they have to keep me they have to memorize only deliver the request that you need from the user that extra information that you need at the exact time that you actually need it and then if you toss the builds in this that would seem like a very professional build page this would be very conventional compared to other build pages and i would argue if you have any gamers on the tech team um and yeah if you have any gamers whatsoever they probably visited build pages before this would make it look way more professional um so what do you guys think i've been talking a lot oh city of heroes that's what it is avengers a lot city of heroes yeah i stepped away so i'm not sure if it's been said but maybe there should be a link or description of what the game is for as the game is more niche um why is it City of Builds? Oh, you labeled it. Um, City of Builds? Yeah, I, I think you try to be a little bit too unique. I would have the game. I agree. I actually thought the game was City of Builds. Obviously, I don't even know if user... Like, if I went to, like... I used to look up Hearthstone Builds. And if I did, like... I don't know. If I saw the name of, like, Hearth Builds... Um... I, I don't know, I, I don't know if that's a good idea to name a website that. But if you do like City of Builds database and you really want to build a brand off of this, and again, creating a blog, creating content around like why these builds are some of the top builds and like actually talking about the game is a great way to bring traffic to your website. Um, creating YouTube videos, just like content creation and just that like a more organic growth strategy to bring people here that's strong even like if you have popularity and forms of the game and you talked about excuse me you could post a, the actual website in the forms and get people that way that's fine but yeah i think having the actual game will make a difference excuse me i ate a lot of food right before this 
Um, but yeah, I feel like this has a lot of potential. It's very niche, but it could start looking a little bit more professional, probably by putting this underneath here and, you know, just going through the actions that I talked about. That's going to resemble a little bit more of an effective build site. And if you focus on um, UX, contrast, uh, yeah, this could look like a really professional build website that you would get like a team. Like you get teams to build websites for games where they earn revenue off of them. Like they're real companies, they're real teams that manage that website. And a lot of it's also content creation and getting community engagement around it. So I would start thinking about how the community can will want to come back to this, right? Um, oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, never mind. Um, that was an old question. But if I do review your project and then I finish, you're welcome to work on it and push up updates and all of that. Uh, I was just answering a question in Discord. Um... Oh, wait, why did I... Never mind, I'm getting distracted. I think that's all I have for this website. Um, awesome job with it. A lot of functionality, a lot of features. A big portion is going to be focused on the UX and how users are actually going to engage with this website. But yeah, awesome job with this. Uh, but also keep in mind, this is going to be a more niche website. I think some of the changes that I mentioned will help this website be more relatable and be a powerful portfolio project. But I would, um, I would take what I said seriously to really convert this into being a little bit more user-friendly and throwing people in right away and making it very clear the, what the primary action at that point needs to be, right? They're probably not going to import builds or upload builds or anything like that until they've looked at some builds and seen like, okay, this is a website that has legitimate builds. I could see other people using it. Now I might take the time to go to an import or if you provide like some way to actually create like a profile or an identity on this website for users that's relevant, that matters because sometimes people just create profiles just for the sake of creating profiles as a pointless feature. No one's going to sign up. Um, and maybe you shouldn't even have that feature just yet until you get more traffic. So, but yeah, I, people probably aren't going to import the build right away. Uh, but yeah, anyways, that's pretty much it for that one. All right. Here we go. All right, let's make sure... Uh, okay, two days ago. This one's good to go. JS for all. So this is teaching JS. I think it goes over a little algorithm stuff. Man, that's going to be a long stream. All right. Interesting. Poor contrast initially. Love the idea, though. Uh, learn JavaScript anytime and anywhere if you are a hobbyist, uh, student, um, aspiring developer. Okay. A little slow on being able to identify if I identify with this. Um, algo questions. Okay, so I click this. Don't create an an- uh, Don't create an animation just to create an animation. Create an animation when the action is actually relevant. Um, features, algorithm questions, practice leak code style questions. Pro like, you're inconsistent with capitalizing both characters, right? Um, but it seems like you did it here, you did it here, but not here. Capital Q. Practice leak code style questions. Uh, looks like you have... Um, Okay, alignment's going to be a little bit off. Uh, what? Doesn't the spacing... So you have two lines here, but the spacing looks shorter here than it does here. Is it? Or is it different? Make that consistent if it's not. Um, algorithm questions. So sign up. You did provide me... Username. Do we want to log in yet? No, not yet. Flashcards. Uh, JavaScript lessons. Um, so what I would do, don't require login to practice these. Give people a little exposure because I don't even know if like this is a legitimate thing that I even want to get involved with. 
and now I have to log in, you're creating too much effort on the user to be able to use your application. Get rid of this login. Does this really need a login? I think that's pointless. Like if they want to save something, they want to save their progress, if they're ranking up like Code Wars does, that's relevant. But making me sign up just to try it out, like, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click off the website. Fuck this website, right? Get rid of the login. Uh, try it out to some. Uh, can I type? What happens if... Run. Test failed. Okay. Uh, run. Okay, so you, you probably have some protection. I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to break this, but I'm guessing you have some protection with this. Uh, give me an array of integers. Ar array and an integer target. Return indices of the two numbers such that they add up to the target. Um, you may assume that each input would have exactly one solution, and you may not use the same element twice. Okay. So if I just return... Um, return indices? I wish I could provide the... Um, please log in for full... Ac uh, provide the actual tests... Um, so it does look like test failed answers or answer zero one. So two plus seven equals nine. So if I just return zero one, does that check test pass? Okay. Um, so it doesn't sounds like, you know, like building algorithms and actually checking that they're doing the right thing rather than just passing the test. That requires extensive functionality with this. Um, so this is going to be... You're going to spend some time, like, really building that out. It'd be cool to have a ranking system, though. What did you use to run the test if you're in chat? Um, yeah, this is by Flying Dog. Uh, that's the Discord, so I don't know if you're in chat or not. Uh... Why is there so much space here? Um, you know what I would do? I would just create like um, a bunch of bubbles just like this. That that would actually look really cool. Just create a bunch of bubbles with minimum height, minimum width, and just they're going across the page, going across the page, going and they're just stacking like that. And then you could just easily choose whatever common algorithm that you want to try to solve. Uh, questions? I'm going to go ahead and click submit. Um... Okay. A uh, little confirmation would be nice. It just looks like it reloaded the page. I don't even know if it's submitted. Um, and I'm just going to keep reiterating this is a hackathon. There are going to be broken features. There is only a month. Um, UX Epic, welcome. So, me being critical, <laughs> that it, it's understandable that there's going to be there's not going to be certain functionality, but these expectations that I'm giving are expectations that'll make it. Like if you really spend some time to build out these features, it'll make it feel and look more professional. Um, yeah, the contrast is really poor here. I wonder if I would create a different shade of this or um, flashcards, lessons. Uh, so what what do I have? I have two some. Okay, this doesn't work. Let me. I gotta remember to read this. There are three main features. The first is a leak code clone where users can do algorithm questions. The second is a quiz like app where users can answer MCQ questions and about web development. Uh, the last is a collection of short lessons for JavaScript. Okay. Um, I can't really do anything, so let's go ahead and log in with the test email and password. Okay, looks like error. Well, you should probably, I think it broke your app. You're probably not trimming this. There's an extra space here. So I'm gonna do one, two, whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, sign in. Uh, that should work. So make sure you trim your username and password uh, variables once you receive them on the back end. Yeah, ranking system would be really cool. Um, we're developers. We like build, like, 
I, I feel like the RPG element are just like ranking in general, even if it, like competition, but just like the more time we spend, the more we progress with something. And I think building a ranking system and or even just like a completion, even a progress bar can make people feel like they're, it gives them that dopamine hit. Give them that dopamine hit. Um, okay, so I'm in. Let's go flashcards. React. Um, easy. What is the declarative way to render a dynamic list of components based on values in an array? All right, we're going to go through each option. All red. I like it. Okay, and then it moves on to the next section. The animation is quick. Uh, okay. I'll go questions. Let's go medium. Oops, flashcards, JavaScript. Let's go hard. Uh, what is it? closure in JavaScript? All right, guys. Here you go. What is closure in JavaScript? This is a test for you guys. How many people do we have here? First answer. We're going to go ahead and give that a try. Three. Success. Good job, Charles. Awesome job. Uh, correct attempts. Uh, oh, the end. Okay, so you're probably going to build more questions into it. But uh, back to flashcards. Cool, you provide a link to go back. And then I can do all capital. CSS. Two capital S's. Good job. You guys are JavaScript pros. All right. Um, what else? Lessons. JavaScript foundation. Um, variables and date. Hello world. This whole thing is clickable. What happens? So nothing happens. If you're going to have a mouse pointer like this and it's clickable, something should happen, right? So the mouse pointer is confusing, but it looks like that was a link. That doesn't even look like a link, right? And so, um, again, Hackathon Project, you're going to be working on it more. I like the Peter Griffin uh, profile icon, but just make this look like a, click a clickable link. There's probably going to be many different links. Create, like, just not tabular data, but, like, separate the items within the list to make it very clear that they're different modules that I got to dive into. But hello world, it sounds like that's probably going to be a description, right? Oh, no, that's an actual lesson. Uh, left align, left align, left align. Don't force the user on desktop to read this really janky centered text that's a little bit more appropriate for mobile. Let's dive into creating your first JavaScript program, the hello world. Console output, open your browser's developer tools and navigate to the console. HTML display, create an HTML file with a script tag. Uh, code blocks. You're probably going to work on code blocks next, right? Um, so if you're going to be writing code, create like an actual readable code block, similar to the style that you're going to see. You have a dark theme website, so have a dark theme code block that's different than the background is on. Uh, but yeah, make it look pretty. Developers like looking at dark mode. Developers like looking at very vibrant, things within dark mode you can make your code uh editor very beautiful and you did so here looks great uh do it here too build some code blocks but again you're probably going to build this out a little bit more you're probably just trying to populate it uh javascript methods i would i don't think you need to condense them like this um Features, what else? Algorithm questions, to some. Okay, so if I look at the solution, I'm logged in. Here's the solution. Got it. I would have test cases. I think test cases are a great thing to have. And especially if people are misunderstanding. Like, to some is, you know, fairly simple to understand. But there are some harder <clears throat> challenges where you still don't quite understand the output or the expectation. Um, having test cases can help with that. Um, and so even description, so when you say, like, you may assume that each input, uh, given an array, return indices, but it, return them how? What's the structure? Is it an array? It is an array, right? We know that, but, um, yep, answer zero, one. What else? Okay, it looks like you have three problems so far. This could be really cool, like building a gamified version of this, building a ranking system, 
or like, hey, someone else is actually trying this problem out at the same time you are. Do you want to compete with this person? Do you want to try to finish it faster? Um, and then hide a solution or something. Like, maybe you don't show the... I'm kind of surprised you showed the solution right away. Um, is that common? I don't think it's common. But, like, showing test cases, that's common. So you could have, like, description and test cases. But you know your app better than you. You know your users better than you. I'm just giving you some ideas. But that'd be cool. Like, you're competing with someone else. They're solving the problem. Oh, shit. I gotta try to solve this and compete with someone, right? Think about ways to gamify this in a way that makes this a fun experience compa uh, compared to, like, Elite Code, compared to other algorithm-type environments where you're practicing this stuff. I know. Me too. Big fan. This is a big win in my book. This is a big win in my book. Uh, so, search S. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. This doesn't work, does it? So, if I go to test email, um, I would do, like, profile. It's a little confusing that I got to click on my email. Am I changing my email? No, I'm going to the profile, right? So, if I go flashcard completions, 153. Cool. Test email, test user. Uh, is this username? Have um, labels for your inputs. Shoot, that's what my Code Battles app is, where you compete with other developers. That could be a thing. And maybe, you know, this person decides to do something else. Um, submit. Oh, yeah, it's, we don't know if it's working or not. Uh, all right, let's check out mobile. Um... Some of the same feedback will be the same for mobile. I'd create some sort of action button if you're going to create this giant um, learn JavaScript. Like, is this a button? This looks like a button, but it doesn't act like a button. That's confusing. Features. Um, then we go into, like, flashcards. Uh, I would just have these. I think you're shrinking them a little bit too much. I don't know. Not terrible. Whoops. Am I just like, do I not? Uh, 16 poppins, okay. I don't know, I think you're cramming them in a little bit too much. I would go completely, uh, just create four rows in the mobile version. What happens when you create more test cases? That also, if you have like rows like that, that can scale a little bit more, but you don't necessarily need to scale when you don't need to scale. What's up, Zinka? How you doing? Um, algorithm question. That's probably gonna... Wow! Wow, that's broken. Okay. That's uh, some CSS to figure out for you. You know, people probably aren't gonna use your app on mobile. You could see some stacking there. That's probably a problem. Probably wanna have that be pushed to the uh, next line building patiently what does that mean gotta be listening in while i cook nice what are you cooking tonight okay um so uh yeah a lot of this seems like i don't do I have a navigation how do i get back um don't expect me to click on this tiny little logo which you didn't have any padding for i think I have to click on the text itself. You can create padding within the anchor tag to make this uh, more of a, a bigger clickable area, unless I missed that. Nope, no padding. Um, salmon salad, yo. Just had salmon last week. I love salmon. It's so good for you. It's so good for your brain and memory. Uh, that sounds good, though. Okay. You could, like, if you're going to have this big of paragraph text, you could, like, this is all bold? Why? Hey, this is very tiring on the eyes to run through bold. Um, uh, wait. Oh, it's 400? Oh, wow. What, is that Poppins too? Oops. Um, 
Yeah, it's Poppins. Poppins, it, isn't Poppins more of like a heading tag? I feel like it's more for headers, not uh, paragraphs of text. Yeah, you did all Poppins here. That's something to consider. Um, okay. I think mobile, you're probably going to spend some more time to really work on mobile and flush that out with the responsiveness and just different font weights and um, some of the contrast. But this could be a really cool site. I'm really excited to see what you do to make this stand out. And I know, like, even just building a lot of the questions in will help it stand out, but that's going to take time to be able to do that. And I think um, guarding against me just returning... I don't, I don't know if it's very common, like elite code. What happens if you just return the answer in your function? Do you pass the elite code challenge? Probably not. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like guards need to be placed in. And that's going to be impressive to build out those guards for basically processing syntax, uh, interpreting syntax. That's huge. There's so much functionality on the back end to really make this work. Um, this is a it, this can end up being a very impressive project. Okay. My YouTube chat froze. Um okay. Anything else? Um I think that's pretty much it. Didn't really find any images I don't remember. I don't know what the profile pic is. I thought Leaco just runs it through multiple test cases. So you could just return the answer and you don't have to even try? Has anyone tested that? Something to change the test cases for testing would be cool. Why would it be cool? Um, okay, I think that's pretty much it. Good job with this. Again, good job to everyone that completed the hackathon. There was a shortened time. If I were an employer, I'd think they really know how to code since they made a website to teach it. Yeah, but that's a... The thing is, like, you can make something look pretty, but it, building, like, taking time to build those guards is what's going to be impressive. You could probably import libraries that will literally allow you to do that without knowing much code. I feel like you can. Maybe I'm wrong with that, but being able to describe the implementation and, like, describing all the things that you had to guard against that you didn't expect, that's a really powerful conversation. Um, be nice if you're writing code and you could put custom inputs in the test yeah but why I'm asking why Anthony you keep making that recommendation but why what is the purpose because I think what this person is doing is actually serving their users uh, perfectly for what they were aiming for I think adding that functionality just for the sake of adding it is irrelevant so I'm asking why do you want to add that um, let's see. All right. This one. Holy shit. There's a lot of projects. I don't, man, I don't know if I'm going to get through all the projects today. Holy. This is a lot of projects. We're on project five out of 10. Okay. Um, no updates on that. ATM. ATM is the discord name. All right. On the ball leagues. Top leagues. All right, here we go. Premier goes to the league. Uh, let me go ahead and read the original project post. looks clean all right so on the ball stats uh what value does this project provide provides value by creating great ui data visualization to show player team stats of football soccer you will also be able to compare teams and players head to head can be useful to predict outcomes of matches or just to keep track okay the outcome thing will be impressive describe the ideal user that this project serves football fans of all ages that are interested in the statistics of teams or players guys like when you're thinking about your audience of the app that you're building a lot of people like 
wanted to, they, when I kept asking, what is your typical user? They're like, all genders, all ages. That is complete bullshit. That is not your typical user. You have to really dig into it. What is the typical user of a football fan? It's probably a guy, right? It's probably, um, I doubt it would be like teenage boys. Um, I don't, maybe it would be, I don't know. Oh, this is, sorry, football in, this is soccer. Okay. Is this soccer? Not actually like American football. But anyways, like think about your typical audience. I would seriously, because that's going to influence even just like colors. It's going to influence structure. It's going to influence like what content is delivered. People want to like try to create an app for everyone, every single gender, every single age. And you lose, you lose sight of the, um, the majority of your users that are are here and have this like certain expectation based on conventions that have from websites that have actually considered who actually uses these types of websites. So stop trying to shy away from like trying to be as inclusive as possible. It's just for everyone. No, it's not for everyone. You're just making your website very ineffective by saying that, all right? Um, so like even just color themes in general can serve your majority user. And once you get more users, you could think about how to, um, how to include other users, but the primary UX, the primary user stories that you're going to create of who is actually going to use your website, there's very specific demographics. And I would consider that because it's relevant to you building out this app. So a lot of people did this with a hackathon. Don't shy away from that. Don't say us, say me. Oh, I don't know. I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, wait, I just joined quickly, skipped around the projects. Very interesting that you said people don't trust companies. Don't say us, say me. Makes it more personalized, so it appeals more to the users. Yeah, 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 exactly. Gotcha. I'm like, wait, where did that come from with this one? Um, all right, so the submission... Main feature of the app is the fixtures. So that was the original goal of the app. Now, the submission was main feature of the app is the fixtures feature where you can view the general info of the match, which includes the date, score, kickoff time. It also has four different tabs you can switch from. You can view the head-to-head -head tab, which displays a list of the previous matches between two specific teams as well. Okay, so a history of matches. The lineups tab can be viewed near or after kickoff. Time, and it displays a field with the team's formation. Okay, um, those are the main features. Okay, we'll look through those upcoming so we go to on the the ball stats top leagues i like top lists so just like you're thinking about relevant information for people that are fans of football um i don't know these teams i'm guessing this is soccer is that a soccer ball is that like a deflated soccer ball or is that a ferris wheel um is that their logo okay uh top players you're so you're creating a lot of top lists this is awesome this is probably going to be relevant, so top leagues. So uh, you're just creating a big dashboard of stats that people don't have to log into. That's awesome. Very accessible. Perfect. View more. View more of what? Uh, to of top leagues. So a big giant list of leagues. So you have top. But you... That's kind of misleading, isn't it? So I would say if I'm seeing top leagues... Shouldn't they be ranked or something like that? If I want to know the top leagues and they're going to be ranked, if I click view more, I would expect kind of like another, like a big, long ranking system of leagues. If you want, what you can do is like view all leagues or something like that instead of view more. Because view more, typically when you have like a top list, which I don't even know if this list is ranked, um, I view more is kind of misleading that it's just going to go through like the initial like 50 of the top leagues, but none of it's ranked. So like view all leagues or something like that might be more accurate if that's what you're aiming to do. Yeah, Prem is one. I don't know what yeah, Prem is one means, Max. I have no idea what that sentence means. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's go UEFA Champions League. Okay. Last two matches, okay. Things pretty much aligned. Lineups. Give images of all the players. Prem is one. 
Oh, you mean just say the whole word, Max. Premier League, you're saying is the best league. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, yeah, don't don't abbreviate things uh, without context. Lineups, uh, timeline. Okay, I like the timeline. Like, this is really minimalist, and... Yeah, we got that, Mahan. Uh, stats. Yeah, in chat, always be very clear. Very, very clear with what you're saying. Um, man, my, uh... Mic is always a little bit loose. I always gotta tighten it. Expected goals, 0-0. Zero, zero. Timeline is uh, FT. I don't know what FT means. It's probably going to be relevant to soccer fans. So I'm going to just assume that's going to be very common across multiple like top stats websites for soccer in general. Uh, coach, no photo yet. Okay. I feel like there's a lot of like avenues I can go down to figure this out when the match ends it's ft oh, okay it's ft got it thank you so final tally is that what it is stands for full time is it full time or final tally uh, it looks like that's already confusing for people it's full time uh, well, maybe it's just confusing for me. Full time. Why is it full time? That's just confusing for me. I'm just gonna assume I'm just not, you know, the average soccer fan, and I should know that. Um, top players, T Minimo. As opposed to half time. Oh, okay. So the final score at full time as opposed to half time. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you. So. Teams, players, shows the teams. That's awesome. Um, yeah, top yellow cards, top red cards. You have a lot of charts. Um, a lot of top charts. I'm going to be honest. I'm probably going to miss some features that you built. I'm going to try to go through everything. But if I was an employer, I'm going to try to have the mindset of, like, I was an employer if I was someone lead on the team looking at your website i'm looking at like what features are going to translate over into what we're doing um i think like so you don't really have a filter you don't have pagination um timeline um stats you're just creating tables of data no pagination uh, and maybe that's not needed so if i look at top players i'm going to go into a player 28 rating so you're basically creating a bunch of tables latest matches okay so it was loading that was an interesting loading option but that did tell me it was loading so latest matches so you're not building like gigantic lists where you need the pagination it's just top lists do you think it would be i would consider this do you think it'd be relevant to create any sort of list that have tons of data where you need pagination that's an impressive feature um, Albania. Okay. Uh, what just happened? Okay. So let it load. First division. Fora. What is this? What am I looking at? Uh, P, W, D, L, G, F. Okay, these are the team names. None of this is populated. This is in past. Is this broken data? First division. Has that not been updated or something like that? If you have, like, missing data sets, um, are you filling that in, or is this just not populated? So you have these, like, weird loading things um, where you could put, like, some sort of useful information to show that there's no data here, because you're loading. You don't really have loading um, icons. You don't have loading indicators for a lot of sections within your website. And um, then when I get to a page that's like this, I'm like, oh, okay, I, I just got to wait for it to load, but then it never loads. It's a very misleading expectation that you're setting. Adding information and images about the stadium for each game would be nice. Okay, why would that be useful? I'm not saying it wouldn't be, but why would it be? Like, what is... 
relevant uh, relevant about that that soccer fans would really care? Like, what information? Adding information and images about the stadium. What information would you want to know? Because um, I don't know if ATM is here, but they'll probably review this live stream. Is there anything else? Yeah, you don't really... You just have a bunch of teams. Um, I wonder if you could search, add a search functionality for this. Right? Rather than navigating through all of this. Let's actually take a look at um, mobile. Do, do, do. Refresh. Uh, let's go 75%. I would argue you're going to have some longer names for the top leagues. I wonder if it makes sense to... Because the text is pretty small, isn't it? That's 12. Yo, that's small text on mobile. Bump that up. So you're already encountering a UX issue where you can't even increase the text, but this is really small text. These should... should be these should probably be rows with the icon on the left. Holy shit, I am talking too fast. I gotta slow down. Just have each one be a row with the icon on the left. You are having to force yourself to shrink the text. This is a horrible experience on mobile. Um, three to zero. Why does this look misaligned when you have the date all the way to the right? Is there like some weird vertical alignment mismatch going on here? Um, no, you just have it stacking. It probably is a little bit more common for this to be vertically aligned with this in the middle of this, right? Top yellow cards, top red cards. Okay. It has a really small text. Holy shit. Um, I, so what you're probably going to have to do, I mean, you just have it, if you are creating an abbreviation that not all soccer fans that are going to use your website can understand, and you're doing it because of the mobile view, I would look at how to create, you know, UX friendly tables on mobile views. It's actually, it can be pretty tricky. And so if you're having to force yourself to just create one letter that a lot of soccer fans aren't going to understand, that's an issue. But if this is common, then... It's not a big deal. Okay, so you can move left and right with this. I have a scroll bar. Um, what else? Maybe a backlink. I feel like we're, if we go into here and we go into lineups and I click on him, there's no backlink. How do I get back to where I was? I would, I would create a backlink that actually keeps the state in mind of where you came from. Right? React Router can provide that for you. I don't know what you built this with, but uh, I would have something like that because I feel like it's very easy to get lost within the, in this, even with a soccer fan. You don't really have any tabular data. And yeah, some people just create like this horizontal view and that's fine. With a scroll bar, that's completely fine. Hmm. What else? Uh, images. These are... Holy shit. Oh, I thought... Wait, hold on. This is huge for this logo. Run a lot of these through TinyPNG if you haven't already. These are... Whoa, these are a lot of assets. This is a very heavy site. Uh, I'm just going to load on the ball. Just like this. We're going to do uh, empty cache. Hard reload. These are heavy assets for... Look at this. 2.9 megabytes. That's huge for these tiny-ass icons. Even on desktop, they're small, right? So optimize those images. You're loading a lot of assets. What else? Um, I think search functionality, where it makes sense in different tables, is going to be impressive. Um... And I think like it gets right to the point with the top uh, analytics. I think it, it serves its purpose. And, you know, I'm not a, a soccer fan, so I think it's going to be a little bit more relevant. Um, you have a navigation of leagues. What's that? Oh, it just goes to... Okay, so this is your primary. You have home and leagues. I would say with home, 
what if you just did like top stats? I don't know if home is the accurate text I would use for this, but it does look like this is an image, right? Um, nope, this is a span text. Yeah, okay, you do have text there. So it can resize based on the browser and accessibility needs. What else would I consider? Anything else you guys would add with this? I feel like you're going to have soccer fans that are able to give you a little bit more relevant feedback. Gregory, what's up? Welcome. I gave you a couple of examples of like what might be impressive features. I wonder if like... What is the main purpose? Uh, soccer fixture, team, league, player information, statistics, and a simple way. It's for anyone who has an interest in soccer, whether they just want to see live scores or more in-depth stats analytics. You know what I should have asked when they were filling out the form? I should have asked, what more do you want to add to this website? There are just some projects where it doesn't really make sense to keep diving deeper into it and adding features. And maybe this website is just that. I don't think, I mean, if you provided a little bit more UX, uh, just a, a friendlier user experience in terms of like what's loading, what's not, what pages are empty, um, because I think you have some inconsistency. Well, you don't have consistency there. You just have like, I think we've already pointed out like where extra information that no data is loading is relevant because you haven't really provided any loading indicators. You might have like a global state where it just updates that loading indicator when more results are coming in, right? Because I think it's going to be very, uh, it's not going to be UX friendly at all when you load like a, a champion league, right? And you have, let me, where was the original? Like this, that little bar might make more sense until you load everything. I don't think you're doing that everywhere because it takes a while for some things to get populated. We experienced some pages with that. And so having that global um, loading thing, I think is actually a, a UX friendly way instead of populating each individual thing if you're making multiple API requests. Yeah, I think that's it. Anyways, awesome job with this uh, ATM. And we're going to move on to the next project. All right. Okay. I feel like I'm talking a lot. We started at five. It's already been almost two hours. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a 15 minute break. I'm going to come back and we're going to keep working on uh, projects. Or not working on projects, but we're going to keep reviewing projects. We have five more. Um, yeah, do you need a break? Yes, I do. So yeah, I'm going to take a 15 minute break. Um, probably eat some seeds or something just to hold me over. I got macadamia nuts are so good. Macadamia nuts are so good. All right, take care, Anthony. Um, but yeah, we'll finish the next five projects when I get back. So, um, I've had a company that is a music, a huge music company that's like copyright claiming my live streams because I use a BRB screen, you know, the Synthwave one that you get from Canva and they are abusing the copyright system and copyright claiming and I would, they're denying my rejections or my um, challenges to their copyright claims. So the next step essentially is to have my attorney um, like fill out an official legal form with YouTube, etc., which they wouldn't win in court, but like I'm not going to pay my attorney to do that. So what I'm trying to say is we're probably going to choose a different BRB screen. we got to find one. We'll come up with one. But um, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and hide my camera and my mic, and then I will be back in about 15 minutes. It is. The copyright... People are abusing the copyright system on YouTube like no other. You'll see... Like, if you follow content creators that call it out, it, it's just a broken, broken system. There was a point where, like, a million creators got hit with a fake copyright claim. It's just, it's just annoying. I, I don't know. Because what's going to happen if I challenge it, 
So here's the process with the copyright system is you get a copyright claim, then you challenge it and say, no, this isn't, this is false. This is, I own the rights or whatever. And it basically goes directly back to the company or person that copyright claim, and then they can reject it. And then basically the copyright remains and they could basically take all your money from that video, which they're doing it to my live streams. So the reason why I'm not pushing back is because I don't monetize my live streams and literally the live streams they're doing it to are privated. So I'm just like, whatever. But then I would basically, um, I would appeal it. Then they have seven days to basically um, just accept my appeal or have YouTube take my video down and then give me a copyright strike. I can only receive three of those. And then my channel's deleted. Um, and then if they appeal, then I have like a portion, like seven days. Once they reject my appeal, I have seven days. I think that's the duration to get my attorney or me. I wouldn't trust myself to fill out this legal form because I've heard YouTube rejecting these things because people don't like do it in a legal manner and provide all the necessary details. So I'd have to pay an attorney because this is my channel. Um, and then they fill out this form. And then basically it's a legal request saying YouTube needs to put my content back up. Um, and it's an actual legal request where YouTube can, I believe YouTube can get in trouble with it if they don't. I think so. But then once I make that legal request, then they have a certain amount of time to file a court case against me and show YouTube proof of that court case, of that pending court case or upcoming court case. And then if they do, my content stays down, the copyright strike stays down, and then I got to go through court, which they would never take me to court. I'd win that. But it's, it's a whole stupid broken system. Um, so hopefully, I don't know if anyone creates content on YouTube, but hopefully you don't have to deal with it. If you guys, I've had people, and I want to stress this as well, if you guys want to, like, if you're creating channels, you want to give feedback on my content, you just pop it up on your YouTube channel. I've had people do that before. Even if, like, you hate on it, even if you disagree with it, I don't care. I'm not going to copyright strike you or claim it. Like, that's that's your, like, if you're, if a channel's just, like, blatantly stealing my content and just posting all of it, yeah, I'll copyright claim that shit. But, you know, if you're just, like, like doing fair use you bring it up you're talking about it man like co content creators that copyright strike people are just horrible people <laughs> they're just horrible people companies that do that content creators that do that i just youtube's a mess so anyways i just want to share that with you we're going to find a different brb screen but for now we're going to go ahead and hide the camera and mic but yeah just something extra for you guys to know um oh and you wanted to know the next uh project i can share that we're going to go through all of them, by the way, but it's going to be the Read Me Express. All right, beer pick.
Yo, all right, we're back. Oh, all right. So I think this next part will probably take about an hour and a half. It's going to be a long stream today. Um, but yeah, I think that song was called Moonbase Miles. It's a good song. But yeah, it's that is a good idea. Next hackathon, build Don's BRB screen. Um. You know, it'd be fun to make a hackathon to, like, build a bot. Like a Discord bot that benefits people, like our Discord. Um, I don't know if it makes sense to have, like, everyone build the same bot, though. Okay. I gotta... I gotta prepare. We're about to dive into the last five projects. Um, but I also want to stress, keep in mind... Uh, the goal of this really is to challenge these projects. It's not to say you did a bad job. It's to challenge the thinking of the projects. It's to challenge the projects to really give them some potential to really stand out to employers and in a practical way that makes sense. I'm trying to think about like from an employer standpoint and also from a user standpoint, what to consider. I obviously don't, I'm not your typical user for a lot of these apps and I don't have that extra context but um just even i'm being critical to the point of like is this a project that's going to be impressive to employers if not what features still need to exist what needs to change um so this is a hackathon you only have a month hopefully everyone's taken this feedback as oh okay this is what i could do kind of to to continue building forward with it none of my feedback is to say these projects suck or anything like that but I always take a very critical feedback so you have actionable, something actionable to go forward with. Um, so, with that extra context, oh, I think we're ready. I think we're ready. All right, so, uh, let's make sure the... Um, there were no commits to the GitHub. Okay, updated two days ago. Do you ever do any general user project review outside of a hackathon or portfolio? Um, yes. When we hit uh, every 5,000 subscribers. So when I hit 40,000, I'll do another review. And then I'll maybe accept four or five submissions and we'll review them on live stream. Or I do offer paid reviews. Okay. Read Me Express. Cedro, uh, there's no place to sign up. No, because we're not doing it. You gotta wait till the 40,000, then I'll provide a, a place. Uh, but yeah, we're not doing it right now. At four, So we're only at like 39,000. Once we hit 40,000, there will be an option for that. But yeah, right now I, I lock it down so people don't get to submit early or anything like that. All right, so read me Express Barcel app. Um... Let's take a look at the project submission. So this is by Shua or Ishme. I don't, I don't, in parentheses, it says Ishme. I don't know. Um, or, oh, I think that's your display name that you put. Okay. It's a little confused by that. Let's go ahead and check out, but yeah, Shua and Discord. Oh, yeah, that is your display name. Got it. So, project name. We are getting close. Very close to 40,000. That is true. This app provides a simple and efficient solution to create well-structured and visually appealing readme files for GitHub projects. It saves developers valuable time and eliminates the need to understanding to understand complex markdown syntax, making it accessible to users of all skill levels. Um, ideal users, developers who regularly create uh, and updates projects. Okay, core features. Uh, customizable templates, interactive input fields, real-time markdown preview, one-click download. Okay. Right now, the app doesn't have a landing page or other instructions. Just assume users know about readme.app. 
MD files and what makes them good. And you got to have an existing GitHub repo or those links badges won't work, okay? How to use. Open the app and you'll find pre-filled forms with instructions or examples. Modify the inputs to create the new readme file. Once satisfied, simply click the clipboard icon on the top right corner to copy the generated markdown. It's the only way to get the file for now. Uh, cool. Okay. Let's find a repo. I'll use one of mine. Uh, what's public? We'll do my blog. Oh no, long time I, uh, started trying to create this open- Oh, it has a readme already. Um... Let's do... My tower defense game? Nope, that has a readme. Hold on. One hour portfolio. This is a tutorial that I built a long time ago, trying to teach people how to build a portfolio. Uh, there is no readme for it, and it is public, right? I think so. Okay, we got our repo. Readme, and one says readme x. Express? What do you mean? That's the... Uh, read me, uh, express. I, I guess that's the name of it. Oh yeah, one says E, X, and one is missing an E. Wait, hold on. Read me, express. Read, m okay, so missing E, missing E. Wait, wh why am I struggling with this? Um... They're all one E. What do you mean? The logo is a different type. R E A D M E. Uh oh, sorry. Okay. It's okay, it's been a long live stream. So I see. X instead of EX. What No. Why is it so difficult for me to understand? How are they different? Read me. Express. Read me. Express. Read me. Express. What is... Is it the X? The capital X? Is that what it is? Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. For some reason, I, like, was going into this with, like, okay, there's one extra letter, and then it's it's weird reading it, like, it's supposed to be read me and then express, and then just throw me off. It might help to display the music credits and license info on the BRB screen. No, Northern Chip. Uh, it was uh, for a video. They used uh, something from Canva for their music video. And they basically tagged my video. And it wasn't even the music. And they basically falsely tagged it. It was a false copyright claim. It was not a real one. It was a false one. Which basically, they can tag my video... And as long as YouTube links it up automatically, it gives them an option to be able to do that. But no, it was a 100% a false claim. Um, include table of contents. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Start here. That's confusing. Okay, it is a drop down. Why do you have these? Um. That's, okay, you're creating different sections, but I don't think having, I think you're just, oh, they're actually bubbles. This is like a weird visual thing where it just seemed like that they weren't bubbles, but you just had like little triangles to create like an apparent separation, but it's actually, you have a background of light gray and then you have these ovals. Uh, like this is very rough to look at, um, but okay. So we have different sections. Use this for the read me, really? Daniel. Daniel, is this your project? No, this isn't your project. Okay. So where's the... Oh, wow. That contrast. Okay. So I'm assuming this person was rushed, right? Shua was rushed. And um, they just... They have some major CSS issues. Uh, so we will highlight each. 
Okay. Uh, GitHub repo name. I'll just put it. So one hour, one hour portfolio. This is going to be the test of this. Um, repository name. Okay. One hour portfolio. Um, project title. What? GitHub username. Catchphrase or short description? Um, Templates for um, a portfolio, a web developer portfolio you can create in an hour. Is it a description or catchphrase or short description? Okay, project logo. Um, what happens if I exclude? Optional. Okay. Don't pre-fill these like that. Like, have this extra alt text. Don't pre-fill these. Okay, save. Okay. So you have it generated to the right. And so that makes me realize uh, that I need to capitalize this. And save. Um, about the project. These example steps. Just load it, bro. Okay, um, you're including text. I'm just going to click save. What happened? About the project built with. Okay, so it loads the, it's not Next.js, no. Maybe there's other, okay, built with. I got to fill that. This is an example of how you may give instructions. So this text should probably be outside of the input. Don't pre-fill the input with the actual value of instructions, right? If you're gonna have lengthier instructions, probably do it above. Um, if it's just like one line instructions, like um, enter an image URL, like that's fine. But if you're gonna have lengthier ones, get it, get it out of the input. Built with. This section should list any major frameworks, libraries used to bootstrap, leave and You know, it'd be really impressive that if you read this. Okay, sounds good, Miles. It'd be really impressive if uh, if you read this from the repository itself, that's impressive. That's an impressive feature. But uh, what's badge mean? Text? I don't... What, what does this do? This seems broken. I don't know what the hell this is. Uh, list style? What does this mean? Text or badge? What does this mean? I mean, I guess I could see here. But... Does this mean... So if I click badge, is it only badge? No, probably not, right? We'll try it. Um, let me just save. So what if I type... Okay, so you have options. Um, CSS 3. Save. Okay, badge. What is text? You should say, like, with badge. Oh, this is an entire badge. Why isn't it just like an icon and text? Maybe this does look better. Um, okay, I get, I get why. Badge. Uh, getting started. To get a local copy up and running. But isn't that... This? About the prod... No, built... Wait, where are the instructions? This is an example of how you may give instructions on setting up your project locally. Um, I'm confused. But this is another section to ask how you're going to get it set up locally. Clone the repo. Okay. Are these steps? Can I edit the steps? To get... Getting started description. So I, I think you have duplicates here. About the project. It, maybe like a little bit more of a heavy description for the project would make sense. Not an example text saying to set it up locally. 
That's confusing. To get a local copy up and running, follow these example steps. What am I getting started? Description. Okay. Pre this is stuff you might want to pre-fill because I, the project uses prerequisites. Okay. Um, npm install. This is prerequisites code. Wait, I don't think that's code necessarily, right? That's a command that you're running. That's misleading. I think you're going to have to spend a lot more time being descriptive in a very accurate way that's asking the right questions. I think you're asking all the wrong questions. Does a uh, light dark mode... It does not. No. Um, okay, so step one. How do I add new steps? I put, Like, there might be... Okay. Um, so probably an ability to add steps would be helpful. We'll go save. Usage. Why is there another list here? Is this a list item? This looks like a list item. Or category that can, I can dive into. Use the space to tell a little bit more about your project and how it can be used. Show additional screenshots, code samples, demos, or link. So... Okay, so you have, um, it's like a, <clears throat> okay, it's building markdown. Um, okay, so if I have it at the be end or the beginning, it highlights the entire thing. So, I wonder if it makes sense, like, if you have this right before this, well, no, you probably shouldn't have to highlight all of it, right? But I think it's a better behavior than this, right? I don't know, what would be, I'd have to look at common behavior with a lot of these uh, editors. Okay. But this doesn't put this in a code. Wait. It looks like... Oh, no, this does. But it's only one? Hold on. I'm used to Discord, so Discord is three backticks. Okay. And this is a link. Okay, so... This is weird. You know what should happen? So you're doing, like, B... I wait. So this creates a, a header for all of the text. Oh, it looks like we're breaking some stuff there, right? It's not properly resetting some of this stuff. It's a bit buggy, but yeah, right. There should be consistent behavior. If you're going to do this and it's generating a new code block here, then this should generate a new header, but it actually creates the... It makes the entire thing a header. So it still seems like you have more work to do with consistent behavior. Um, oh! So I can't undo that, but I can create a bunch of lines. Um, huh. Table. What does that do? Uh, do I have a dark mode extension turned on? I have, uh, no. It's light mode, so it's probably default based on the Mac, uh, your Mac. Or which might leak into your browser preferences. But, um, that's the only thing I can think of. I don't have, like, um, I don't think I have something specifically set within Chrome. Uh, but obviously it's broken, right? What else? Uh, question. Basic syntax. Okay. Like a question probably creates some sort of text or option to make it clear that this is like uh, markdown syntax or something like that. Look up markdown syntax. Or markdown cheat sheet, or if you have that, but it looks like it just goes to docs. Um, okay. Um, contributors, last commit. So you are reading certain stuff. I would really, like, it would be very impressive to be able to pull this information out of it. That's very impressive. Include back to top. Um, okay. Okay. 
And back? What do you mean, and back? Um, looks like you have an, yeah, a complete extra element there. That's meaningless. Okay, let's click save. And then we have to copy this, and it gives us the markdown, which is fine. Right? It probably gives us the markdown. Yeah, it gives us markdown. That's perfect. Um, gives us HTML. View demo. What What is it generating? Okay, here's what we're going to do. Okay, let's check it out. Template for a web developer portfolio you can create in an hour, view demo. Um, wait, did it give us the option for a demo? I don't think it did. So I think that link is inaccurate, right? Oh, gotcha. Uh, you're back from doing laundry. Okay, welcome back. Um, about the... Okay, so about the project, steps, built... Excuse me, built with, getting started. Prerequisites, uh, usage. Uh, contributing, open an issue. Okay, does that open the correct issue? No. Um, I don't think that is the correct link. Make a pull request. I don't think that is the correct link. Um, so what I would do, and this is kind of just like um, probably a hackathon tip. If the hackathon, when you submit your project, gives you an option of like features that you were trying to do or like that you would follow up with, that's fine. But it sounds like you didn't you didn't really finish the functionality of some of the inputs that you were trying to build this README with. I think this is this has the potential to be awesome, and I think like really automating some of the language uh, reads with this that would be perfect. That's a impressive feature, and the UX we talked about the UX like and contrast and everything. That's just it feels very broken this is unusable um and then it looks like night mode and dark mode are that doesn't switch um and you go to this okay it does open up in a new tab um yeah so i think you just like you probably got rushed with the hackathon it, it's really broken right now but it, it like it has the potential to be something this is a cool feature I think it's useful. I think it's a really useful feature. And what's probably going to end up happening is, it's, you know, Daniel, maybe you had this generate your README and then you change some stuff that is broken, hopefully. I go back to top. Yep. README top. Uh, but yeah, like this has the potential to be very, very useful. This is awesome. I would love to see what you do with this. Continue working on it, of course. And don't, uh, you know, don't make this animated or clickable if it doesn't really do anything i guess it i don't even know if it's navigating to the home page um hmm okay let me check out mobile okay uh current document start here about the project uh read me express i think you have some stuff jumbled a bit right not very responsive that's something to mess with. Um, I'll try to be generous. We'll switch a little bit. Responsive. Looks like you have a minimum width. Is that what's going on? A 492. And so if you go to XR, I think that's what's going on. 
I used it and it ended up deleting a lot of the sections I didn't want. It would be nice to have an option to not generate them all. I think that's a great idea, Daniel. I do. Um, okay. So... Yeah, I think you, what you did was set a minimum width on your body or something like that. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to oh, chase it down if I don't find it here. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to mess with it. Maybe it's actually HTML. Okay. doesn't feel very responsive. But anyways, the idea is good. The idea is really good. There are ways to make it a little bit more impressive, and I think automating some of the things that it is reading is uh, impressive. Like, even you might have some commands in package.json, for example, if you have like a node JS set up and like being able to read some of those commands and giving them the author of the repository a selection of commands they could just import. Uh, that could be impressive. So I think the strength of this can really lie in a lot of the automation and just providing information up front based on information that you read from the repository itself. That's where this becomes a really strong portfolio project. Um, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much all I have. You guys have any other suggestions? What's up, Jessa? How you doing? Okay. Cool. Um, good job with that. I definitely want to see where that ends up. That'd be cool. That's a good idea. Do, 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 do. All right. Oh, let's go ahead and close that. Whoo! Song Exchange Online by Daniel. Or not Daniel, uh, Turtled. I guess Daniel. Um, okay. Uh, let me make sure there are no changes. Cool. All right. So I have a Spotify account that I just created for this. Let me grab the password, I'll log in, and then we'll jump into it. So, but it does something, it imports some stuff, but it basically, I believe, suggests playlists or suggests songs. Okay, long password. Okay, log in with Spotify. Logged in is done. Okay. Let me um, change one thing, hold on. Make sure I'm logged in to the correct account.
Uh, not you. What happens when I click that? Log in with Spotify. Okay, so it automatically logged me out. Okay, hold on. I wasn't confident that I was logged in with the right account, so... Okay. View your Spotify account data, your email, the type of Spotify subscription you have, your account country, and your settings for explicit content filtering, your name and username, your profile picture, how many profile or followers you have on Spotify, and your public playlist, what you've saved in your library. Create, edit. Um, okay. Um, agree. All right. Let's go. What's up, Mr. Fritz? It's been a while. How are you doing? The reviews are going pretty good. Long live stream today, but the reviews are going good. All right, so continue with only like songs. So which playlist best represents your taste in music? We'll recommend songs based on your selection. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to build a uh, playlist. Um... Before we do that, I do want to read the description. So, what Turtled submitted. A way to upload any playlist to the site by pasting a link or selecting it from a list instead. Just grabbing your liked songs automatically. Okay, way to preview the songs of the browser. Maybe like 10 seconds of the song so you know if you even like the new songs before exporting them to a Spotify playlist. Okay, public page for each user where it displays all their playlists they've shared with the site. This way, if a user likes one of their playlists, they can go to their page and see all their other, all their others. Possibly dumb idea, maybe even have a like button on their playlist comment section to make it sort of like a social music network. Okay, could have a page. I think like just suggesting songs and creating like an automation that does that is very powerful. And just creating an app that focuses on that before you do anything else and button it up. That's going to be impressive. Um, okay. Let me pull Spotify over. So open Spotify. So... Search. Uh, we're we're gonna go Harris Heller Stream Beats. We're gonna build a playlist. Okay. Uh, by the way, if you guys are looking for royalty-free songs, uh, Stream Beats is really good. I use a lot of their music. So we're gonna go ahead and add a playlist. Um, create a playlist. Um, that playlist is going to be called Yo. Uh, did that edit it? No, it did not. So I do Yo and I click save. Um. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do. All right. Um, and then we're going to add this to Yo. And then we're going to add this to yo all right so we have a playlist called ambient gold i'm doing good we're just going over some reviews right now p2 potify what is that the name no p2 potify um all right so we're gonna go refresh all right we have our songs so you can have an option for like songs that is a thing um, we didn't like any songs. Um, let me actually just go ahead and like, um, White Lie. We're gonna do a refresh. Uh, we're not gonna do that. I wonder what happens. Uh, like songs. 
what is this bar? What does this mean? I'm confused. Um, because I have a button here and a button here. What's the difference between these two? Why do I have two buttons here? Um, okay. Oh, okay, so that's a selection, but there doesn't need to be two buttons. Continue with... So I'm forced to... Hold on, let me look at the submission. Um... User's songs can then be exported from the site as a new Spotify playlist. It probably won't work well because not enough people have signed up. Okay. So I have two selected. How do I deselect it? So I can't deselect like songs. It probably is a thing I want to do. But I will... Excuse me. I ate so quickly trying to get to these uh, reviews. So continue. Loading. Okay. 0% match. Um... Okay, so you probably have, like, a very strict... Is this an artist? Okay, oh no. We couldn't find anyone with similar taste to you. Um, my, please check back later when more users have signed up. For now, you might enjoy listening to some favorite songs from one of these randomly selected users. Um, do you think you should be giving usernames out? Like... Is that a... That might be publicly accessible, but... Or is it private? That kind of feels like you're leaking shit. Am I just like... I don't think you should be leaking that. I don't think I should know the names of these people. Or is like... Spotify, is that... Is Spotify a very public place where I'm going to see names and stuff like that? I don't use Spotify... Well, I actually use it every stream, but I don't really... Look at what I'm sing so i don't know you would know that better than me uh but if i export um yes it's very public okay so all this is accessible that's a public username oh there's a pub oh okay a public username and a private username okay hopefully they're listing the public username include common songs uh, include playlists that have zero comments. What am I selecting here? Include co what are common songs? Um, include playlists that have zero common songs. I don't know what the difference is, but we're gonna export. Um, okay, song exchange. Alan. Okay, cool. But. What? Nothing got generated. Oh, I guess it did say zero. Okay, include playlist set of zero. So include common. Export. If I generate it again, nothing. Um. It says 846 new songs to discover. Zero songs in common. Um, include playlists that have zero common songs. It's a whole... Like, when you add a playlist... How how am I able to add common songs and a playlist to a playlist? Is this exporting to a playlist? I think it is. Uh, Spotify is fake... Facebook-ish. Is it? Okay. Um, oh, I sh Aren't I already logged in? Okay, I shouldn't have to do that again. Um, discover. Export. Um, okay, we got some... So oh, I think it's Charles. What if I do this? Okay, I see it. Nothing. So it actually blocks it. I don't think it does both, right? Include common songs. So I have to actually deselect it, which is misleading. And then it'll build the playlist again. That seems uh, like a bug. Not expect, uh, exporting songs. Yeah, well, I mean, I expect it to not export this because it says um, zero common songs. 
And I don't even know what that means. Export a playlist into a playlist um, and include comment songs. I, I like. I, I just have no idea what's going on. Um, so I think the UX is just horrible. It, it's terrible. The instructions are terrible. It doesn't really say what it's doing. Um, that needs to be ironed out for sure. Um, but yeah, it would have been interesting to see common songs. Um, I don't really... <sighs> what did you guys submit? Hold on. I'm going to put a little more effort into this. Um, and I know he asked for some playlists in general. Elias submitted it. Okay, Skillet. The Resistance. Okay. We're going to add this to our playlist of Yo. Right? So we should have a common song now. There's... What? I know you probably added this. Um, Elias, 0% match. What? Hold on. Is it... Is it doing a second load of the playlist or not? I feel like it did an initial import, and then it won't do another import. So how do I get it to do... Okay. Um, I'm going to be honest. I think this website is broken. Like, there's nothing to really review. I don't know what else to do. Um, I, I, I have no idea. But let's go... I mean, you could go off of a lot of the feedback that I've given, but, you know, this is probably pretty small. Text is a really small button that people are going to have trouble pressing, right? You can, you know all my feedback with the mobile stuff, so you have some stuff popping out. Uh, but, like, this is... That won't work yet. It doesn't refresh songs after you add more to Spotify. Gotcha. Um, what if I log out and then log back in? Will it do it then? Daniel, how do you know, by the way? I thought this was... This is your app? No, it's... Are you... Hold on. Are you turtled on Discord? I thought you were a different Daniel. Are you uh, turtled on Discord? Oh, you are. Okay, this is you. Um, Is there anything I can test? Can I re-log back in? Or something like that? And have it import the playlist? Nope. Okay, got it. Uh, okay, just a broken app. Um, hence the nature of hackathons. Um, and that's okay. <laughs> you know it, but I think it's a cool idea. Pandora has a really neat feature of basically... Um, well, basically, it just kind of builds your next song, and it kind of builds this custom playlist for you. But it doesn't even save it, though, but it builds this custom playlist for you based on, like you even what you can consider is like if you like or dislike um that could influence the algorithm of the next song that it suggests for you right maybe you hate a song that someone else suggested so maybe you might not like that like songs on that person's playlist and so it might deprioritize and you give weight to different playlists right you could really create some complicated functionality that actually is very relevant to people trying to build a playlist and just song discovery that's huge. Um, th there's a ton you could do with this, for sure. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much my feedback. Uh, hopefully you continue pushing forward with it. Um, all right. So I'm going to bring this over. Okay, remove access. Maybe I'll share an update in like a month in Discord. It will be nice. And yeah, for sure. That sounds good. Yeah, it, it it's frustrating when you put so much effort into something and like it's not really testable. Sometimes that will happen with a hack hackathon. So 
Um, a lot of times you'll like submit dummy data and populate it and stuff like that. Um, and you'll see like a lot of hackathons from coding boot camps where you'll have populated data that represent what users would actually do when you're presenting it. Uh, that's something you might want to do if you ever do participate in a hackathon. I'd like to see an update down the road. Sign it off for the evening. Cool checking out the projects, chat. All right, take care, Miles. Have a good night. I think it's an interesting app. I do. Um, I just hope you continue pushing forward with it. Oh, yeah. Project 8. I am so... I'm going to be honest. Listen, I'm going to be honest. I'm so glad only 10 people succeeded with this hackathon because there's a lot of projects to review. I was originally trying to take a break this week from all live streams, all content creation, and then I'm like, fuck, I got a hackathon. And so I'm just making this a full work week for the most part. Um, but man, like reviewing, you know, 20 projects or 28 projects, phew, that's rough. That is rough. So I'm glad we only have 10. These are cool projects to see, but I feel like I didn't prepare well to be able to present all these projects. Um, let's see. But I highly encourage people to continue working on these projects and then share what you have in a month in, in the Discord. Um, all right, so this is by Charles, Supply Manager. review with on Yes, that is true. Okay. Hasn't committed. Uh, supply Manager. Uh, I'm just, you know, I'm not even going to read the original submission. I'm just going to read the final submission. So supply, here, we're going to load it up. Supply Manager is a supply chain warehouse management app designed to allow managers and associates to assign and unassigned trips to and from order fillers, access performance metrics via charts and tables, view the items on each trip and more. Uh, and a warehouse order fillers complete trips by driving through aisles. Okay, picking cases from slots, stacking them on pallets. They are given a specific amount of time to complete each trip, known as standard time. Performance is calculated based on how fast order fillers complete their trips. The dashboard shows performance metrics for the current week. The other pages contain tables that display information about employees and trips for individual dates. In the tables, each trip has a drop-down menu next to it. That lets you assign and unassign trips, if possible, and view a list of every item contained on each trip. Okay. Cool. Doesn't require a login right now. Currently in development. Color palette matches Don's background. Yeah, it does. Nice. He knows. That was a goal of his. Okay. Project. Nice little pop-up. For more information, please visit the link. You have a new tab opening. Good. Lift driver management. Loader management. Okay, cool. Pretty full-fledged app. This is impressive. Try live demo. Okay. Uh, so a dashboard. Um, trip completion. Trip completion for today. Very beautiful. Unassigned. Assigned. Completed. Trips this week. Total trips per day for the week of 8.23 to 8.29. Date. 723 trips. Okay. Okay. Top performers, Jesse. Could I should I be able to click into Jesse and see how Jesse's doing? Okay, so this is just an example. Um not right now. Oh, Charles, you're here. Yeah, this is by Charles, by the way. Okay, not right now. Um Okay. So who's this for? Is this for, like, direct managers that want to... Like, who's this mainly for? Is this mainly for direct managers that want to check how their employees are doing? Or is this more for higher-up managers that want to get a broader sense of what's going on? If you had to choose one. All managers and higher-up associates who have access. No, I'm saying specifically, 
right? So it sounds like you're creating an extremely broad thing. But if you had to like, because like you, you basically overreached with this, right? You overreached, you didn't have a target audience. What was your original target audience? This is kind of the problem with creating a very broad app that really serves a little bit of no one. So I'm talking about not all managers. I'm not saying you don't have data for all managers, but who specifically do you think is going to benefit the most from this app? Is it going to be direct managers or higher up associates, whatever, that want to monitor more minute details and like see individual employee performance? Or is it going to be higher managers that care about more broad statistics? All managers and higher up associates is not a good answer. It means you're way too broad and you're not really serving anyone. You're going to have a lot of features that do very little. The direct managers of order fillers. I don't even know what the hell that means. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Um, the direct managers of order fillers. Okay. And the order fillers are the, the individuals that we're seeing with a top performance. Okay. The highest performing order fillers. I know what that means. I'm just kidding. I know what that means. Okay. So direct managers are going to find this more valuable. Okay. Good to know. Um, so direct managers, I wonder if this is going to be more of a primary feature versus this. I guess like direct managers, they might want a more encompassing view of like how the week is going and compare week by week potentially but um okay so that helps um order filler details select associate performance this is oh you do have individual statistics for perf uh fillers right love it on which day this is trip one, trip two, trip three. Okay. So three trips throughout the entire day. Can the, okay. So the trips can expand into more intervals. Shit. Yeah. I figured this wasn't a custom UI that you built uh, or custom uh, design or custom CSS. I figured it was some sort of library bringing this in. Keep in mind, if you're applying to front end, um, that's going to look a little weak if you don't have a project to showcase like how real good you are with see I keep biting my tongue. Once you bite your tongue first, it just keeps happening. So it, it is going to look nice, and I think it is going to help this project. But just make sure you don't lean on a UI library if you are aiming for front-end focus jobs. If you're not, you're aiming for more back-end focus jobs, that's different. That's irrelevant. So keep like lean on a UI for that, a UI library. Team management, um, order fill details, trip management. Wait. Okay, some extra detail. Got it. Okay. Um, I, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. You have a... I would do a toggle. Don't... If you just have this, do a toggle, right? Uh, this should automatically switch it to light mode and dark mode. I know I'm blinding you guys right now, but that's okay. I like light mode. Uh, try live demo. Okay. Pretty self-explanatory. Like, this is a pretty ambitious project. You mentioned some of the other features that you're going to be building with it. It looks good. Again, if you're leaning on a UI library, the question still is going to be, like, how comfortable are you with the foundations of CSS? Um, but actually, Charles, are you more focused on trying to find a front-end position or a back-end position? I think that's relevant. Uh, let's see. Looks like you have a max width here, but not here. Back end or full set? Gotcha. Okay, so a little bit more back end heavy. Okay, that makes sense. A UI library makes sense. That's actually a really good strategy to be able to use that so you don't really have to spend a lot of time with CSS. Um, cool. Let's check out mobile. I, I don't know if I'm going to do heavy mobile or like check out the mobile. What the hell is going on here? Responsive. Oh, I trusted the this to just be good. Um, let's do a hard empty cache, hard reload, and then I'll toggle this. This looks broken. Yeah, this is broken. Uh, I, I assumed your UI library would take care of this, but this is clearly broken. 
Um. Okay. I, I don't even want to try to navigate through that. Trip management. So, you know, consider like a hamburger menu, stuff like that. You didn't have time for mobile? Okay. So it's going to be pretty broken. Um. I would consider what Ludo said. I would watch the uh, recent conversation I had with Ludo. I would really focus on a mobile first design. Heavily focus on a mobile first design. That is, I mean, like you have to understand your audience. So maybe you're going to get, no, I mean, mobile first design, even with managers in this industry, it's still, I still think it makes a huge difference. Um, but it, it forces you to really think about the minimum information you need to deliver to the user. This actually shows kind of like a broken mindset towards front end, but I wouldn't expect necessarily like a back end focused person to care about this. Uh, but it, it really forces you to think about the minimum information you need to deliver to the front end user and keep it minimal and then expand with extra information that can become available when people have the device that can access it that's UX friendly. Um, so I would argue the uh, the features of the UI library actually, your backend focus, it's not that impressive. Uh, it doesn't really tell me what you can do much with front end. Um, I'd argue the functionality is going to be a little bit more impressive. And so that's what I would start digging into. Uh, order filler details. Um, is there anything that I'd question? Trip ID. A pagination. What did you use for the API uh, to build out this API? Ugh, there we go. Oh, you... Oh, shit, you are getting the entire payload. Prisma and Varcel... Vercel S... What's Vercel SWR? This is expensive. Uh, so you have pagination, but you're preloading everything. That's a red flag. Um, you should have paginated endpoints. What what is Vercel SWR? Did even look that up? Is this caching? Um... <laughs> Automatic updates. So, so you basically make a, just to confirm, you make a huge request to gather all of this data up front. Holy fuck. ID, completion. Okay. Wait. Route. Stop. What is stop? Stop? Number of stops? Is that what it is? Like, I would actually consider your some of your variable names, I, don't, I think, are kind of ambiguous. Is it plural stops? Total cases. Is this total stops? Date, employee ID. So you have the trip ID. Where does the employee ID get populated? Trip details? The truck stop? Oh, so like 
you have IDs for the a unique identifier for the specific stop. So when you say even the truck stop, are you talking about the number of truck stops within that day? Are you talking about um, the unique ID that identifies a specific truck stop that's a common truck stop? I feel like even in your description, you're being very ambiguous about it. And I think your variables and how you're storing this information represents that. You want to be very careful. I, I'm not a big fan of like ambiguous variable names like door. What is this? So if you basically have, uh, it sounds like you have like a back end heavy app, right? The front end, it's kind of irrelevant. You just tossed in a library. That's That doesn't really showcase what you can do as a front end developer. But um, for back end, um, do you have an, I would really consider building out API documentation to explain some of this. Do you have API documentation? Because it feels like you're making a massive request. You don't really have paginated requests. Um, a lot of these terms are specific to work, to what workplace? What do you mean to workplace? Charles, even the way that you're describing it, it's it's way too ambiguous. So here's here's a challenge that you're going to be facing. I have some explanation of terms on the GitHub readme. Yeah, but build an API documentation for it. Don't lean on the readme. Um, actually, I do want to take a look at the um, documentation. Do, 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 do. Uh, or not the documentation, the description. So order cases are received on pallets. Number assigned team management, order fill details. None of this is API documentation, though. Trip summary. So even like in your description, you're saying specific to workplace. What what does that even mean? So when you say specific to the workplace, what does that mean when I see door? So you're going to have seven that represents door that's specific to the workplace. What the hell does that mean? So if you're going to be aiming for like backend heavy positions, they're going to ask these questions. You have a lot of... You have a lot of ambiguous variables and ways that you are trying to store this information. Um, I would really build up an API documentation for it because this looks messy and this looks expensive. And they're going to start asking questions based on, you know, like how you've chosen to retrieve this information, how you've chosen to store it. Can a developer just go into your API and like fully understand what's going on? I would argue like you, it's just too ambiguous. So you're going to, you're going to be challenged on that, and I think you're going to fail on that pretty hard. So I'm going over this information because it is a back-end heavy position or a back-end heavy app that you're trying to focus on. The UI library doesn't represent you as a front-end developer at all. Um, it never does. So think about some of those things, but like the, one of the first things that I would do is like build an a API documentation for this because this is um, that'll help back-end developers understand like when they're looking through your code, help them understand how you process things, how you um, how you think about and how you organize different things within maybe a larger app that has a lot of data that it needs to store and a lot of different uh, data points. Um, but yeah, this this looks like um, I like the first thing is like pagination, really build that in and then uh, paginated uh, queries and then, you know, just have it request another trip but i think it's like each trip because i don't think i clicked all of them right because it looks like each trip let me actually just try to give you a little bit of a courtesy no it's actually pre-filling everything isn't it employee id number what is this do you have blank employee ids okay so you have id username Um, let's see. Where were the blank... Hold on. IDs. It's not the ID of the... It's the trip ID, but... Employee ID. How do you have a trip with no employee? Do you have broken data? Employee. Like, what does employees mean? What? So, can an employee ID represent multiple employees? Okay. 
All right, I think that's enough of that. But do you see what I mean? Like everything is, it, it's very confusing to try to figure out like how you're storing this data, how this data is connected to each other. Um, and you could really help with changing some of the names that used to represent the data points, but also like API documentation is gonna be huge and work on, you know, you have very expensive calls, work on that as well. Um, even just like trying to build like custom paginated, something custom paginated, um, fuck, like I don't expect you to build some like custom caching thing on the back end. I think that's a little bit too difficult for um, kind of an aspiring backend developer, but. Um, yeah, so that that's where like, this is actually a huge difference between like coding bootcamp grads that where the coding bootcamp claim that they can build a backend and then coding bootcamp grads that then spend like a considerable amount of time like really diving into trying to make queries optimized because a big time uh, investment for a lot of backend positions. Employee ID means the trip is unassigned. Um, gotcha. Okay, so that could be solved with... Um, is it, so I would expect like a trip ID to not even exist if an employee didn't go to that trip. Maybe it's like an upcoming trip ID. But again, that's where like API documentation can help with that for sure. Um, but yeah, anyways, like I was saying, that's the difference between like a coding bootcamp grad that just graduates like can build a basic CRUD app um, versus someone who uh, really focuses on building these optimizations that are going to be very, very relevant and expensive as things scale in a backend position. So those are uh, just some tips for you. At the takeoff, I'm sad I only saw a few of these, but awesome projects. Have a great evening, everyone. All right, take care, Jessa. Have a good night. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, so mobile's broken. I'm not going to really look at that. But yeah, that's pretty much my feedback. Good job with that. Good job with that. I like seeing aspiring backend developers like dig a little bit deeper into uh, stuff that's going to be more relevant to backend because I think you have different backend considerations for sure. Um, that they're ju they're just going to be looking for different things like front end. It's a little bit more visually appealing, right? They're going to care about the problems that you did solve. But like if you're just bringing a fuck, if you built a custom version of this all CSS and you just built this with React and just a bunch of components, you focused on like a, a hierarchy or architecture in your React app, and you could talk about all that. That's holy shit. That is an impressive project to showcase, right? But if you just used a UI library and it made it incredibly easy, very trim code base because of it, um, that's not that impressive uh, for front end developers specifically. The projects are still going. How many are left? Two. Yep, I'm still going. Gotcha, Don. Thanks for the honesty. I'll definitely work on the API documentation and optimizations. Yeah, you're welcome, Charles. It looks good on the front end. Like, that's one thing that backend developers struggle with. If you're building, you're essentially building a full stack app and you're building out an API, a lot of backend developers like really struggle with the front end. I highly encourage you to pick up like a CSS library. Just pick it up, um, build component, use that CSS library to just build components quickly in the front end to use your API to showcase exactly what it's doing. And then what a backend developer is probably going to do is like dig into it and they're going to get curious. Like, huh, let me go ahead and take a look at this query. Oh shit, this is impaginated. That's expensive. 701. Ooh, okay. Like you can get a total, like you can get metadata or just like a total amount without actually retrieving all of the results. Right, and that's going to be the difference between like a coding bootcamp graduate, where a lot of coding bootcamp graduates just preload everything and they sum up that 701 rows because they have all the information they know, versus like building an extra meta tag or some sort of tag that represents like the total amount. You create the sum of the backend, but you don't serve up all the results through that JSON response. All right, cool. Uh, but, but, but I was a little bit more. I wanted to dive into, uh, or I was different with what I was critical there, but hopefully any aspiring backend developers, those are some things to consider. Okay. Um, I think I'm good. I'm good for the next two projects. It's just, we started at five. Damn. Okay. Let's go ahead and jump into, uh, map the heat. Kid Alex. Uh, is there a GitHub link? I kind of want to check it out. Um, I'll ask. I don't know. I'll decide what I want to do with the GitHub links. 
but yeah, I mean, uh, Charles, feel free to share it in Anthony. If I don't know, just share it in uh, Discord. And Anthony, I forgot your Discord username, so you guys can DM each other in Discord. But um, I don't know if I'm gonna paste the GitHub links. Maybe I will if people want me to. But other than that, I'm gonna paste the uh, live links most likely. Um, all right, so give me give me five to ten minutes. I'm just gonna get up, walk around. It's been a long live stream, and then I will come back. We'll finish the last two projects. So I'll be right back. All right, I think um, <laughs> we've been doing this stream for so long, Spotify got to the end of my playlist and started choosing random songs, so we probably get to deal with more copyright issues. Yay. All right. All right, let's go. I'm ready now. Got a little refresher, got some more water. All right. Let's make sure. 
kid Alex did not uh, update. Perfect. Map the heat. Y'all. Uh, a user-driven site to find spicy food and add restaurants for those seeking genuinely hot dishes in their city. Users can add restaurants, view them on a map, or um, or more detailed view where they can also add photos. If you add a restaurant, the address must exist, and feel free to add a photo. I will be clearing the DB afterwards. I'm not, okay. I'm probably not going to add a photo. <clears throat> I'll be honest with you. Um, this looks good. Picture, text, really good. I'm not a... I think um, square corners looks a lot better than circular. I don't think... Especially when you have two buttons next to each other, I think square is way... It looks way more professional. Uh, yeah. I would use... Um, square corners put them next to each other but also like you should understand your primary call to action is it search restaurants or is it search shops which is your primary do you think have a different uh a different emphasis on bolt and you know if you're not logged in um I don't know. I feel like just having a sign up when I don't even need to sign up, it's pointless, right? Log in if it leads me to a dashboard. I think that kind of makes sense, but you're telling me to sign up with an exclamation mark. Why? Why would I give a fuck about this to sign up? I don't. You haven't given me a reason to, right? So stop with this, like, trying to shove people to sign up right away if they have no reason to. If they're going to add a restaurant or something like that, that's a great time to get them to sign up. Um, okay, so search restaurants. Okay, wow, those are probably like high load times. Uh, that took forever to load. Okay, it's my, there it is, little buggy. Uh... Okay, um, eight. Oh, there it is. Come on. Yo, you don't need this. This doesn't need to be this large. That's ridiculous. Holy shit. 312? If I go into it, maybe it's, uh, yeah, this, this is a tiny image. This is way too big of an image. Toss it in tiny PNG or tiny JPEG, but you can get very clunky. So this is the kind of thing where get a lot of images displayed and you can get a very clunky feel to it because you your assets are so large and they take forever to load and they're pushing around content as they load um i think if this loading until everything was loaded in you it's not pushing the content as the images load that's good but um okay more information yeah it's still small pictures you don't really need it unless you are gonna create like a big overlay of the food Open. Okay, spicy. Looks like you have some... This probably could be pushed down just a little bit, right? Back to map. Okay. I think, honestly, I wonder if I would have, like... Would I have, like, the icon or the logo of the restaurant with the number of... Is that a tamale? I don't know food. Is this a uh, pepper? Yeah, like the number of peppers above where you could actually view like okay here's my location oh search by restaurant by name um i almost like you could kind of see yourself on the map um like hey i live uh here by the way and i want to click this one should i click into no that's actually i think that ux is fine you click into it it has a neat card you can see the spiciness of it. Um, you see it on the left. I wonder what would happen if you have like 80 restaurants. Big city, 80 restaurants, 120 restaurants. Like Chicago, you're going to get tons of restaurants in Chicago. 
Um, I wonder if I want to have to click on... I, I like the idea of navigating through the map. Do I have to click on each one to, like, okay, where's the five? Right, so adding, like, a filter to then filter by five. Like, what happens if I... Oh, that'd be cool. So you have a filter here, and you could basically just filter out anything that's too spicy or that's not spicy enough, and then it makes these icons disappear that don't meet your filter. That's useful. Uh, I'm going to go... What's a Chicago restaurant? Can I look up Chicago? I'm just going to search. Why not? Um, you'd probably want to search by location, right? Because you have a map. You probably want to search by location and then like, okay, Chicago is my city. Let me go ahead and see what spicy restaurants exist in Chicago. If you feel like, the, you know, the spicy lovers wouldn't navigate this website as I'm describing it, let me know. But I feel like they would. Add new restaurant. There you go. That is a fantastic call to action now with the username or email and password. Sign in or sign in with Google. Um, but it's like add new restaurant, sign in, or sign up. You don't really have the option to sign up, right? You kind of give me the option here. Like if I go to sign up, there's a sign up, but you should probably include that feature or that option here. Uh, but that's where you want to put the sign up. Um, and that's just grayed out. Oh, it was highlighted. Um, okay, back. I think you, so with anchor text, I would, so when you have a navigation, you probably, this is like an active link or something like that. It's some status with the anchor link where you probably should leave it white or have it set to white where you have a different status of the link. So it's grayed out. But anyways, like I said, I would just get rid of this altogether. And I would argue you could have a login button here. That's a thing. And then within that login button, maybe you have a bunch of saved restaurants. Uh, but sign up does not seem like it's relevant here. Uh, what else? Can I... What about a, like a Chicago? You probably don't have... So these are all the restaurants. Okay, I'd be... Hmm. Okay, there is a username and password. Let me see if I could add a restaurant. Um, do, 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 do. so at a restaurant. Oh, you only have certain cities. Why is that? I mean, there's probably limitations with the integration. Uh, London. What happens if I just click submit? Uh, please fill out all the fields. I would actually go a little bit further and like create, you could say, please fill out all the fields, but create some error handling more specifically and individually with the inputs. Um, see if you actually validate. Cannot read properties of undefined reading. Okay, obviously this is broken, right? So you got to build some better error handling with that. But I, oh, it did add it. <laughs> okay, that's broken. Uh, definitely validate your inputs for sure. It'd be cool if you had peppers on the map were filled. Oh, red relative. Oh, that's a good idea, Mahan. Yeah, four out of five, it would just be filled to this. That's actually a great idea. I love it. Um. Okay. So. Uh, back to map. Can I edit it? I can't edit it. I should probably. Should I be allowed to edit it, or does it need to go through a screening process? For something like this, it should probably go through a screening process, to be honest, um, if you're actually going to get users using this. Search shops, okay. Search restaurants, is that the same? Um, why don't, what if you had it like... <laughs> so it's the same page. Oh, wait, hold on. I can't click the back. I'm stuck here. That's a broken routing system. 
Um, by the way, this song's fire. Search shops. So it's the same thing. Um, just have it one button. Search restaurants or shops. Um, but you might identify... Maybe there's a slightly different icon... Uh, like a shop and a restaurant. That's probably going to be relevant, right? Like I'm looking for a restaurant or I'm looking for a shop. Those are probably two different actions. And if you're going to combine it into one, I would argue the icon should look different, right? Um, or have something to identify it as a shop or restaurant. Or a filter. Again, that filter would go a long way. How do I change city? I don't think you can. Yeah, because you'd want to look up... That's what I was saying earlier. You'd probably want to look up the city. And that doesn't seem to be a feature here. That'd be a really good feature, though. Uh, what else? I think that's it. Let's look at mobile. Is that actually... See, it's so frustrating because sometimes I can't tell if it's actually broken or it's a dev thing. But typically, like if... I usually do an empty cache and hard reload. I undo the toggle and redo it. And that typically means your responsiveness is a little broken. Um, but I could be way off. Oh, no, it's broken. It feels broken. Yep. Oh, yeah. So you probably should have a minimum width, and that's fine. But yeah, this responsiveness is just broken. 600. You're going to have a mobile device. Um, am I logged out now? So it doesn't really maintain session data. Uh, I probably want to build that in. Wait, log out shouldn't appear if I need to log in here. That's misleading. Am I logged in or am I logged out? I refresh. A login should do a redirect if you're already logged in, but I, you can see the broken functionality here. Uh, yeah, this... I'm just gonna permanently ban you, Arsh. This isn't... definitely isn't a place to interrupt and do that. Probably one of the reasons why I ban you in the first place. I don't know. Uh, what did I just leak? Oh, CLI. Nothing. Alright, so... Let's go mobile. I don't... yeah, I can't really check. It's not really responsive, so... You'll have to spend a little bit more time to spruce that up. But yeah, it's an interesting idea. I, I remember you mentioning it. I'm like, this is a really cool idea. There's probably tons of spice lovers, and you are you understand that like they're probably going to be searching for restaurants or shops. And that is... Um, I, like, I think you probably understand the spice user. I would consider some of the feedback that I gave to uh, where, like, how they're probably going to use their app or your app. So consider what I said. Maybe I'm way off with it, but um, th this is, has really good potential to be a real app. This is a really cool idea that I think is effective. You can get users behind it. And hell, like I keep mentioning this, but like what happens if you create a blog, a search uh, SEO friendly blog, and you talk about these spices and like new spices that are created and like people's favorite spices, like people love top five lists and stuff like that. So Think about like how you can create content to bring people into this app. That's going to be powerful. That's going to be very powerful. All right, cool. All right, last app of the night. We've been going for three and a half hours. Probably going to make four hours. Whew, yeah, I usually cut off any work at... 9 p.m. Central Time, so we're 25 minutes away. I went way over, though. Um, I didn't go way over. I just I was working a lot today. So... Okay. Watch Wise by Bubble Goose in our Discord. Um...
Okay, two days ago, you are good. Let's check out your app. Watchwise. Okay, movie night made easy. Watchwise is a movie watch list manager and discovery portal. It was built for people with busy lives who don't want to have to search for a movie to watch when they have free time. The main feature is the ability to keep track of the movies you want to watch. Phase one, MVP is to make the manager and display movie info. I was hoping to display streaming providers, but that did not make it into this version. In future iterations, I want to build a powerful search and filtering system that includes things like runtime suggestions based on the amount of time you have to watch a movie. Okay, that, that'd be cool. So, yeah, and all you really have to do to come up with ideas for this is like, hey, I like watching movies. I'm creating this app for myself. Okay. Watchwise. All right. Um, search for a movie. Damn, that's a hard contrast against a white background. That's rough. Um, wonder if you consider like a darker blue. Even like this is like a darker blue. Is this a darker blue or black? Um, you could even have like a dark theme too, or this color might look better on a dark theme. Embrace movie night with Watchwise as your companion and managing and discovering films. So search for what film did I just watch? It's been a while since I've watched a movie. Do you have TV series here? Last Kingdom, Seven Kings Must Die. Oh, wow, that is a rough color for a background. Um, I would just look at, like, some, you know, like, fundamental designs for modals. Okay, add a watch list. Just movies. What's up, Bubble? Glad you can make it here. 2023. Yeah, like, the contrast is really rough, and that's going to make or break something that's, uh, uh, designed. Oh, looks like you have broken thumbnails i don't know what that's about you probably have an api you could just grab the uh png or the images from right you probably didn't manually upload all of them okay remove from and obviously you're going to create like authentication with this move from watch list um i should be able to click out of this modal um but i gotta click close that's fine uh, well it's not fine but something to mess with rating zero okay so people have to rate them do you have to rate them you i built this in dark mode which is why it looks weird also use the tmd okay so you have some broke like just some broken stuff here um i don't know how you built this in dark mode but do i have an option for dark mode i'll choose that um, and a watch list. So, okay, I understand the idea of this. Provider data supplied by Just Watch. Um, top rated. Godfather. Okay, so you have top rated that you can add to the watch list. And it should build, like, honestly, it, the, the power in something like this is going to be suggestion. So you have popularity, right? But if I am adding stuff to my watch list, Wow, that's... Okay, you have some broken stuff there. Um, but if I am adding stuff to my watch list, what would happen if you created an algorithm that figured out... Uh, so maybe it's just based on genre, genre or something like that. Like top rated with a filter of genre because I added like four horror movies. Like maybe you have a suggestion list, right? And so of course, this is a hackathon. Maybe you didn't get to this, but the power of an app is going to be the algorithm built behind it for the suggestions and there's there's so much depth you can go to in that algorithm that is going to be a very interesting conversation in the interview but it's also like that's going to be what makes this useful never ever trust someone's going to build like a, a watch list or anything like that um Never trust people are actually going to do that and try to save anything until they can see the power of your search algorithm. Um, it's going to lean on something that's popular, but then what happens is, like, if you add something to the watch list, what happens if you have a little pop-up, like, um, 
added a watch list and suggestion uh, um i would word this in a different way but giving people like a prompt like your su top suggestions have changed based on your what movies you've added to the watch list right that's what kind of makes this a powerful app versus just another movie category app that no one will ever use um uh, watched okay how do i move to watch okay so i have a watch list and then i move to watch okay remove and so this obviously doesn't save page oh wow okay so you have some broken functionality there you're gonna have to fix can't i should be able to go directly to that page and bookmark it um even if it's gonna be a redirect all right so you basically accomplish your mvp of like display um being able to display this so we're going to move on but i think yeah the power is the search algorithm uh otherwise this is just useless um okay uh give me i'm i'm like really starting to think like i'm just experiencing no this is actually okay this is actually your this is broken the responsiveness is just broken from what it seems like um i've you, like you can go back and listen to some of the feedback about ux <clears throat> um advice but a lot of it's just crammed in net netlify is the worst with that bug it happens in a lot of react apps gotcha um sounds like netlify isn't a good solution for react uh then unless there's a fix for it but yeah you got to know your host uh net like you can't the thing is you can't continue blaming netlify or something like that maybe you got to move off if that's a common bug you can't even fix or you got to look up that fix but having especially like a, a mobile version of this and really considering this to be mobile first where like these images are probably going to be a bit larger take up a little bit more space it's harder to read the text um actually actually be a little bit courteous 16 and 18 that's not terrible but i think increasing the images would go a long way um and then you have like the rating essentially you kind of have like add what is this add to watch list for this movie this movie i have no idea so spacing is going to be your friend here um top rated watched yeah responsiveness is just broken um cool okay it's a fairly broken app for now again you know kind of the nature of a hackathon uh but one thing i like i think is really powerful i actually don't have a good idea like if you're taking a big movie database i don't have a good idea of like a really popular app that i've heard of for movie suggestions maybe that exists i'm sure it exists right but when i see a lot of these like movie gallery websites if you want it to be impressive if you want it to be an impressive practical project like i would focus on the search algorithm what makes yours unique and i think that's really going to make your app stand out that's the direction you probably want to lean into because that search algorithm especially if you're playing to full stack or back end positions is impressive even to front end positions it's impressive but um yeah what was the original goal uh let me actually look up uh bubble bubble goose zach i like your name um updates nope projects it will offer seamless access to streaming platforms where the movies are available and deliver and then you're going to have like links to platforms um it will which I think is a good idea. It will have, actually, I think that's a great idea. It will have an advanced search engine, hopefully integrated with AI chatbot that takes user suggestions and their schedule. So yeah, really putting time into investing in the uh, search algorithm. I don't know, you could do an AI chatbot. That'd be interesting. Um, advanced search offers personalized movie recommendations based on users' preferences and available time. 
uh, with intelligent filtering. Yeah, like actually using ChatGPT to like talk with ChatGPT and just have people say like, um, yeah, like I kind of liked the movie Scream um, and I'm looking for like an old time movie like that. Uh, do you have any movie suggestions? Like you can, if you can allow people to give that dumb of a prompt and have it give movie suggestions, but it's super custom, right? That's actually really powerful. How about a ChatGPT um, or linking into ChatGPT to be able to do that? That's that's impressive. Uh, that would be a really cool feature. I think you should seriously consider it. I completely agree with the search algo. I'm planning on building it out. I'm moving soon and life got in the way, so I wish I had more time to address a lot of the issues you bring. It's fine. It's it's a hackathon. Again, I'm going to stress over and over, this is a hackathon. All the things that I'm bringing up, it's not saying that you failed. It's not saying that you did a bad job. This is me trying to judge it based on this being an effective portfolio project that can gain users. You could create a real app out of it that's actually useful to people, and it's a strong portfolio project, so the bar is high. And I understand that like people had life going on and stuff like that with Akachan. I like I'm, I'm, um, I, I think a lot of these are uh, fairly cool projects. Some of them a little bit more niche, and I can't provide tons of feedback with it. But I trust you to know the users, so I try to give considerations. But yeah, I want to see. I hopefully, hopefully, we are at the. Um, what am I trying to say? I'm so tired. Hopefully, uh, people, the participants, are going to actually push forward with this and make these into real projects. Because what happens is, I meet so many aspiring developers, and no offense, but like they just settle on this, or they spruce it up, and they built some responsiveness in it, built a basic search thing, and like that's it, right? That's their portfolio project. Do you know how many projects are out there like that that aren't very impressive? Right, And so people need to continue. If they have a project they really believe in, they think it's going to be useful towards people and they want to build a strategy around getting people to use their app, continue doubling, tripling down on that app and building complexity into it. And don't just build complexity for complexity's sake. Don't just build an authentication or login because, oh, I could show employers I could do an authentication or login. You could do that with any app. Build that because it actually, you have stuff to save and users can actually build a home here in your app, build a profile, build a presence and want to come back. You give them a reason to come back. Um, that's a good reason for login and authentication. If you just want to toss in login and authentication for like a test app, just to learn it, that's fine. But if you, when you actually get to this real app that you're trying to build, it's a real product that serves real users and you just can't this is the app that you double down on triple down on this becomes your passion project this becomes your marketability project that makes you very it makes you stand out then you don't just add features to add features you really think about the user and how they're going to navigate through your app so like a lot of people will just stop with an app like this and they won't continue pushing forward please please do not do that you're just going to be another Another resume and a stack of 300 applications. You're not going to matter. Not to that employer. It's going to get tossed out. Not impressive, right? So just really consider a lot of the feedback that I'm giving. And a lot of people ask this question of like, should I just have tons of projects? I would argue the people that really stand out are people that come out of like even coding boot camps with like really impressive capstone projects that feel like a SaaS product, that feel like a real app, that feel like a professional project. Those are the projects that stand out. My search results claim to have workarounds for the Netlify React bug. Okay, that's good. That is definitely good. So usually I think Netlify is really, isn't Netlify just like serving static assets, which, which essentially like even Git pages could do, but I know Git page or GitHub pages, Git pages, whatever. I think you can have some router issues. Um, but yeah, there are just some hosts that like really struggle with React router. It's an easy fix. It's just uh, one file telling Netlify where to redirect. I had the same bug during the hackathon a while ago. Okay, good to know. Good to go. I mean, like changing hosts can be a big ordeal, so that is good to know there is are fixes about it. That's a lot of potential. If, if yeah, if this 
If Bubble really doubles down on the search algorithm, I agree. But I've seen so many like movie gallery projects. I'm like, okay, this is going to be another one that players are going to just swipe over or just close out of, not even look at, right? So something that's actually, um, actually very practical is going to be impressive. I'm excited about it. That's awesome. Good, 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 good. And hopefully the move went well. Okay, I'm cooked. I have nothing left in me. Uh, this is like almost a four hour live stream. Uh, I appreciate everyone hanging out. And guys, you've hung out for a while. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep this public if you want to go back through it. There's no way I'm putting timestamps tonight. Not doing it. I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, but everyone that did hang out, Mahan, Anthony, I think you were too. I don't know who else is still here. Northern Chimp, you've been here for a while. Um, seriously, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you guys. And if you haven't already joined Discord, it's completely free to join, and the link is in the description. And before I forget, thank you, everyone. I did just update this. Thank you if you do become a, a member, if you uh, subscribe with Discord Nitro, Twitch, anything like that. It's $5 a month. It goes directly towards my bills. I do appreciate it. Discord Nitro boosts the server. But also, next month, I am going to be... So starting next week, I'm going to be offering... Um, I'm going to be doing private events in our Discord server for members, Twitch subscribers, etc. Where we're going to be going over like educational programs and it's just going to be more of a private thing. I'm going to do this... Um, oh, what is it called? It is... Um, stage. Where people can kind of listen in. I'm going to go over like a 30 minute deep dive diving into the educational program. Give my feedback on it. We're going to look up reviews. I'm going to treat it like I'm looking for a good educational program. We can go over like private topics and stuff where I don't really cover it in YouTube. But um, I am going to be doing that for people that do support me. Um, I think like once every two weeks or something like that. I'm going to try it out. So yes, you did miss it, Sugar. But it will be public. So you can rewatch it. Did you miss it? <laughs> My stream starts at like 5 central time. Who's the Jose Gomez guy? Um, I have no idea what you're talking about, but that sound that name sounds familiar. Oh, you're talking about yeah, Jose. He's been a member for a while. He comes in uh Oh, wait. I actually um I, I he does come in here, but it's infrequent. It's been a while. It, yeah, he is the longest sub. He's been, he's like an original OG of a sub on Patreon. Uh, he's been my longest sub. He barely comes in here. I even like, I think he hit two years and I actually sent him a DM and I, I thanked him and he just keeps supporting. So appreciate that, you know, and Troy over two years, crazy subs. Um, all right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Good luck in all of your projects and happy coding. Take care.